in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed God gave man authority. The Bible says the heaven, even the heaven of the heavens has, is the Lord's, but it says the earth has he given. That's a very important thing. The earth has he given to the sons of men. When man was being given that access to dominion, Satan had it. Are we together? Satan was somewhere around the earth and he had everything clear. And from that time he began to seek for a way to negotiate with man and the only way he could get man to fall was to do get man to do what he did treason rebellion are we together he came through Eve and then lured Adam and I have taught us again in this place how that Adam fell willingly everybody say it Adam was not deceived the person who was deceived was Eve Eve was deceived Adam fell because of love he didn't fall because of ignorance are we together and that remains true today there are few men who fall because of ignorance it's easy to deceive ladies it's very difficult to deceive men they fall because of love the second Adam also fell because of love Jesus was not deceived the father didn't say just come and look at it and then just close heaven and say i meant to say you should come and die no it was a well calculated thing his wife that eve had now fallen there was a separation so the second adam there were many things that parallel jesus and adam he's not just called second adam just because of the nature of sin no are we together now he's called the second adam because he did what adam did and so he looked at his bride and he stripped himself away of his glory and he came to join that bride like Adam fell from the glory of God are we together now so redemption is a restoration process redemption was not an initial agenda redemption was a restoration process of course in the infinite wisdom of God a program already had been created like that but experientially speaking right in the garden there was no discussion about apostles and prophets and teachers and koinonia and churches and meetings and all of those no 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 it was about government it was about governance it was about legislature it was about replicating the fullness of the life the glory the character the nature the influence of heaven to be able to find expression across all that territory i hope you know that not every part of earth was like the garden of eden the garden of eden was a type of god's intention because as i'm going to be teaching you it is how god advances so he creates a prototype of his intention plants a man there and gives that man capacity to extend that influence so adam's assignment among other things was to be able to piece together the resources that made eden eden and start extending eden and there were two major ways he would do that one by creativity the other by reproduction take note we are going to deal with this we are discussing very deep kingdom issues now reproduction creativity all other dispensations did not know that there was a possibility of reproduction by a man meeting with a woman producing seed it was always creation not reproduction it was our dispensation that introduced another dimension the only way things were extended in dispensations before us was creativity so if you wanted something it was purely a product of invention 
but now god revealed a dimension of himself you see marriage has nothing to do with a man and a woman marriage is a dimension in god he only brought the woman out of a man so that they will be actors on earth the primary purpose of marriage is not just children the primary purpose of marriage is to reveal something about god then children come as an advantage so when you lose the prophetic implication of marriage the physical activities are just a waste that's why satan likes gay marriage it's not about a man and a man a woman and a woman it's about corrupting a program are we together now yes so when a man likes a man or a woman likes a woman it's not just inordinate desires that's that's not the issue the is is that men are actors on earth and satan is rewriting another script to describe something bad about god because he dwells in light there is no darkness so he brings a man and a woman these are the only actors who can best describe that mystery called marriage so satan is switching scenes and bringing a man and a man and a woman and a woman the realm of the spirit understand the message that is being sent are we together reproduction reproduction i'll be teaching you different dimensions of dominion later on and you find out that authority exercising authority is just one out of the many ways are we together yes there are many facets authority exercising authority is one of them by speaking passing decrees number two the ministry of prayer especially intercession is another system of dominion number three reproduction you are not manifesting dominion if there is no reproduction hallelujah so the fall of man was a veering off of the original plan for many of us the foundation of our christian journey just starts with the cross or the coming of jesus it looks very spiritual but it's wrong the foundation must start right from the beginning are we together i taught you something in theology that we call the law of first use or the law of first mention that means that when you want to examine the character of a word or the the usage of a context you have to search for where it was first mentioned study the context of his usage and that's what you use as a compass are we together now so if you want to know the purpose of man we must go back to the book of beginnings genesis are we together now and then see what god said about that man you don't search around for scriptures of prosperity and wealth and then find out where man just appeared in the scene you must go down from the beginning and god said when man appeared he never had any sound on earth the first sound his ears will hear was the speaking of his creator be fruitful multiply etc etc and all of that so it's important that we look at that and study it very importantly the fall of man led to the necessity of redemption jesus himself coming the entire program of redemption was a restoration program not a restoration to heaven not a restoration to heaven please listen carefully not a restoration to heaven a restoration back to god's original agenda even heaven itself as we know is a subset of that agenda revelation tells us clearly i told you the bible finishes with the beginning of a new dispensation am i against heaven no am i against the reality of the fact that saints will be caught up to the heavens no not at all the bible acknowledges that but then it does not stop at us being in heaven we are returning back again right to the earth so it is important that we understand um god's system this series has three main areas we're dealing with the second today the first is what i call the original plan helping you giving you an exegesis of the beginning to understand that god's original idea was not just for us to have cars and houses go to school get married have children train them the way an average believer and well-meaning believer the way an average believer is trained 
is not makes him or her not to be productive let me tell you something it matters how you are trained and it matters who trains you are we together let me repeat myself it matters how you are trained and it matters who trains you the person who introduced jesus to you did something to you very serious it was more than a message the person who has introduced the faith life and the spirit life to you may have communicated his or her limitations it matters what you are told about satan it matters what you are told about demons it matters what you are told about the holy spirit are we together it matters what you are told about purpose and destiny it matters it's not enough to just have information it is important to study the communicators of those informations because this is where error and limitation came from so we have sincere people who are well-meaning but they have not paid the price to take advantage of the ministry of the holy spirit and the word to study comprehensively the program of god unfortunately our bible colleges our schools of ministry do not do so much justice in opening people to god's blueprint so the entire scope of the average believers understanding of what we call our pilgrimage the journey is this i am born one day i receive an evangelical message and then i'm told to give my soul to someone i cannot see and then i hand over that soul to him and then in in return i hear that he gives me a life whatever that is i just know i have it and then i'm also told that my name is in the book of life meaning i've escaped hell hallelujah glory to god what else do i do i'm encouraged to be a worker in church then i'm 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 encouraged to get a wife or a husband that is like me then two of us are encouraged to make sure we have children are we together then we are encouraged to make sure we train those children as a sign of responsibility then we are told to just live our lives giving glory to god regardless of what happens and then we are told to prepare for death that is that is that is another writer script that is not god the word of god that liveth and abideth forever is very clear as to god's intention so most believers are largely confused you were in secondary school and they told you just keep moving university just finish up you came from the world into the university from university they say now that you are going into the world and you know all kinds of sympathy happens and then you now enter into the world and people say get a job and you get a job and then get a wife or get a husband have children and then try to have cars depending on your level of carnality if you want to if you, you are broke and nothing happens just manage it and all sorts of 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 teachings that look like they are nice then one day you find out that you are sick you don't know why you are sick and then you go to a man of god who says you are healed and you don't even know why you were healed why is god interested in healing men why is satan interested in afflicting people then you find out that a dear lady gets married listen i'm giving your work your faith work meaning and then the lady is barren and she goes to the doctor doctor i've been a nice lady i didn't live a wayward life what is happening and the doctor says that's what i'm trying to figure out i was trained to study just give me time and the doctor is confused cannot find out what is wrong and the innocent lady lives in pain and her whole ambition is oh god give me a child or give me children think how confused we are on earth everybody is trying to suggest to someone how they feel their lives can be better so someone says look if you don't have money your life will be bad and then the other person says so this is what you know i've been looking at okay let me try to get the money then you become a millionaire and you are happy and you find out that that realm has another trouble you cannot even explain are we together and this is how we live we receive advices from confused people who confuse others we mentor our children they grow in that confusion and the earth is just a cycle of failure it is important that among the the curriculum that we are given we must be able to give meaning to our lives that's why people commit suicide why not just because they are frustrated their frustration only amplified the meaninglessness of living that's why people do all kinds of stupid things with their lives abuse the word abuse means abnormal use you will misuse everything god gave you if you do not know why it was given 
are we together yes when you carry 10 bottles of alcohol with the writings written boldly that it destroys you you are not pouring it on the ground you are transferring it into your body it's called abuse an abnormal use why because you do not know that that body was a loan like you collect a loan from a bank if you collect a loan from a bank and you misuse it you are already signing in for disaster so we abuse our bodies when god gives you a wife and you don't know why a wife came they ask you why are you married you say well i just found out that i was age was not on my side and they said i should find somebody it so happens that this is the scapegoat who i now called and you abuse that innocent woman are we together or vice versa there are women who abuse men you now find out that god gave you a calm person who says sorry for everything and now he happens to be the victim of your emotional confusion your the 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 confusion that surrounds your trying to define your life and you vent it on your spouse and where both of you are bold enough to confront one another the children become the victims it, it is still an extension of confusion when people celebrate golden jubilee they celebrate it angry wondering what they've been doing for 50 years oftentimes most of them are not healthy they can't hear well they can't see well they made costly mistakes in their youthful days that they are paying the price now they didn't have access to the mysteries of the kingdom they've destroyed their lives they are poor they are broke their lives are meaningless it's alarming the rate of suicide right now it used to be in the west you know the developed nations and now even in africa you get up you don't find your child you just see a letter farewell and you see someone on a tree now if we don't do something about this let me tell you right now counseling is big business psychology psychologists are getting a lot of um, um business now because there, there are all kinds of trauma centers not just from plane crash so a human being can be alive and just enter a trauma center and say look i need help why i don't know what i'm doing i'm seeing things i'm hearing voices my life is confused we need to return back to god's blueprint otherwise we are going to live absolutely useless lives when you understand the dominion mandate then marriage becomes useful children become useful prosperity becomes useful education becomes useful are we together when you understand the dominion mandate it will make sense to you every requirement the bible gives so we cut away from god's original agenda and then we keep telling people don't use don't live a useless life live a life of meaning and the person say what is a life of meaning get a job get a job and the person says, okay he gets a job and fights all over his office till he retires aren't you seeing the way our lives are it's a circle think very carefully when you were 10 years 12 years just deal with your little friend or your little brother or sister about the confusion in life now look at you are getting to 40 you have joined that vicious circle of confusion even as preachers so many preachers do not know why god gave them a church god just called me and said raise me a people a people of power a people of holiness a people of grace a people of prosperity and we put that that team on our churches our members come and they don't exactly understand what we're saying someone gives a testimony oh god gave me a breakthrough we clap but to what end god made me a minister god increased the dimension of his grace then pastors chase after anointing and you ask them why and they say my church is not growing my life i can't i can't live like this no bread on my table i need to access power i need value so they access the anointing like escapism from poverty then when they become a little anointed they are now happy doors of ministry are opening and then honorariums are coming and all of that and then with that that's how people live i want you to refuse to live a meaningless life are we together you must insist somebody now is about to get married tomorrow in this confusion he's confused he's holding the hands of another confused person and then they are starting something they don't even know where he's going will they dance yes will they eat yes will they be happy eventually no 
no this is not about demons god's original agenda is the key to joy and happiness not money not education ask those who have these things rich people hang themselves and drop their money and wheel it to a cat why because i have five useless boys in my house give this cat my inheritance our world is gradually demonstrating that disobedience to god is costly so we must return back to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see you there are many of us today our parents are angry with us why because they want you to follow the path they followed and the word of god is already telling you that ah they like the way their lives are and they they do not believe that something they are doing is why their life is like that they tell you just follow don't please don't embarrass us just let it be like that oh i want to get married to who yeah, the brother he's starting off mm, don't do that you see if you do this we are going to beg are you not seeing the way our lives are and then people control people and we are victims of men's thinking there's a lot of gap let me tell you something you need to re-examine the concept of age this thing called age the most excellent part of age is the wisdom attached to it if age fails to come with wisdom it is useless did you hear what i said yes that a man i'm not you know we have i have i have so much respect for elderly people you're elderly here i honor you with all my heart but i'm teach. we need to redefine our philosophy of i am old and i am young because there are many old people that are responsible for the pain of people on earth age gives you access it should give you wisdom only age does not just add wisdom on its own at best it can give you sophia human knowledge the fact that you made a mistake does not mean you have found the answer so you can tell us in 1961 i made a mistake did you find the answer you may still be in that ignorant at that point you are just familiar with the problem not the solution how many old people mentor young people you are about to marry and oh no problem i remember i married in 1941 that asked that man's wife whether she enjoyed marriage see her an old woman she would tell you i only enjoyed marriage for three weeks in 40 years that's the person mentoring two people and he said listen to me no i won't listen to you no sir i will respect you but i reject that kind of life you will not define that template for me Do you know why God is called the ancient of days? You know why? The, he is called the ancient of days because of one word, wisdom. Take away wisdom because Satan too is an ancient of days. He's old. The Bible tells us Satan is old. What is the difference between him? At least they are old enough. I think any man that is older than 6,000 years is old satan is not six thousand years old before six thousand years he was already called that old serpent yet he's as foolish and stupid as whatever because it is only a fool that says in his heart there is no god and the bible says even the demons they 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 try to ignore it so they deceive men into believing there is no god get your life into your hands and trust god to use the word of god as a compass and redefine your life because there are many of you looking at me right now we are doing what we call jack of all trades master of none this is how they taught me to live oh this is how i will live i have my little job with nmpc another person has a job with one uh, one para 
paramilitary and then we're on our way going we don't know the purpose of children so we abuse them people give birth anyhow and make the children liabilities to men and society you just come and somebody passes a child to you and say take care of my child as if, as if the person was part of the arrival of the child. Why? Because the people doing that do not know the revelation behind Abba, Abba, Father. If Before you source a thing, you must be ready to sustain it. This is what should govern getting pregnant. Not time. Do we have the resources, the wisdom, the grace, the capacity for a child? If a poor man gives birth to seven children, he's a foolish man. Correct? Not just because he wants to demonstrate that he can give birth. He is Abba, source you must sustain. So you leave those children and they become armed robbers. Remember I told you Satan is looking for bodies. And because those bodies cannot be handed over to God, Satan will find available bodies and they plague our society today kill people rape women and children maim people destroy the peace of society we have violated the dominion mandate and this is why this teaching is very necessary are we together revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 the original plan was what i discussed i spoke to us extensively about the fall of man and I spoke to us about how that redemption was a remedy system. Now that you are born again, you must be able to have a redirection back to God's original agenda. And I said a few things to us. I said how that there are certain conditions that are required. Number one is your natural birth. For you to be able to stand and execute the dominion mandate. One is your natural birth you must be birth born of a woman because when jesus came he came to redeem all those who were descendants of adam listen let me teach you something everybody look up hmm. the blood of jesus is only applicable for descendants from adam if you were not part of that dispensation the work of grace and the cross is not relevant to you otherwise satan and demons should also be forgiven because a statement was made on the cross it is finished what is the it everything that had grieved the heart of the father the legal claims of justice had been appeased the bible says he shall see the travail of his soul isaiah saw and he shall be satisfied so if he says it is finished that means the demons that neglected their original estates that are now in everlasting chains alongside satan i've told you satan is not the most wicked of the spirit no he's not the belief that satan is the most wicked of all the spirits the king of all the spirits is is not necessarily error it's just a limiting knowledge because satan is not bound in everlasting chains there are spirits more wicked than him that are bound in everlasting chains the bible says that they were bound even for the sake of the elect are we together God. i pray that god will give us wisdom you see how peaceful your life will be this is what satan does not want us to know man of god listen this is what satan does not want your congregation to know because if you don't know this story you won't see the necessity of your victory and you will not know that you have been restored to now begin to walk in dominion and demons will play games with your life they will play games with your destiny you will live your life under the mercy of situations and circumstances so your natural birth then your spiritual birth or what i call a rebirth the bible calls it a regening regeneration regime every possessor of adam's genes born of a woman is born in iniquity are we together now born in iniquity means that legally you are under the influence of satan the prince of the power of the air as wrong as well as the elements in this system and you cannot carry out the dominion mandate with the genes of adam so there is a regening 
a regeneration are we together now when jesus christ comes into your heart a real miracle happens there the bible tells us there is a translation the bible says he that is joined to christ is what help me one spirit one spirit not two spirits one spirit so christ comes to live in you he creates his throne in your heart tabernacles in you in the person of the holy spirit now watch this the moment that happens you are now ready not to dominate you are not ready to dominate you are ready to now begin the process that restores you back to god's original agenda the dominion mandate now this is where many believers miss it and pastors ah, pastors if you do not understand the difference between prophecy and experience you will mislead people the speakings of the bible are twofold the prophetic communications of god are we together now and the experience of that communication when god speaks from his perspective it is done because god has no past no present no future he's called alpha omega time is not something that god is limited by he is not even limited by eternity eternity is still a subset of him if he dwells in eternity then somebody created it correct are you getting blessed tonight and so you must understand that this god that we are talking about is not limited you must understand his systems and how he works when god speaks he can say sam when you enter that house and by the time your fifth child comes you see that and sam can say i'm not even married that's the speaking of god god will never say when you marry uh -uh. he talks to men as if he's talking to himself this is this is why many people do not know god can look at you and say promise take care of these 30 children whereas he doesn't have a job that's god because in his word is also the grace to convert that prophecy to experience so he will not speak to you like he's speaking to a man let me tell you one way to know that a word came from god is that there will be no resources at that point to make it come to pass whether spiritually financially etc if god speaks to you and you have the resource to do it you had your brain or a demon noah build me an ark to stadium two stadium of i mean the ark of noah was stadiums too like that are made of gopher wood how many years plantation agriculturist will give you that noah spent 120 years building that how many years 120 years but the way god spoke it it was as if rain will come next week this is a mistake many people make god can say i have sent you today this is how god speaks because your whole lifetime is still his today so god says today i have anointed you as a prophet to the nations then you get up with lack of understanding the systems of god and now ordain yourself and try to get visa to ghana or smuggle your way to uk and you die somewhere in the forest and it there will be is it a lie no god spoke to you but you did not understand the difference between prophecy and experience it was paul who was teaching the church in hebrew and began to teach them in chapter 2 and told them he says now god did not leave anything under the feet of man are we together now he was trying to quote um, the the psalm of david right what is man that thou art mindful of and then he says but now that's experience in god's eye and in god's mind nobody should be sick in god's eye and in god's mind there should not be one sinner on earth because right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain go to the prison is there a thief there please answer me is there a thief that went into the prison today yes so does that mean that the efficacy of the word is not working no it is he already said it is finished and there are still criminals it is finished there are still barren people god will look at someone on a wheelchair and still say it is finished yet he's still there the day that the anointing and the faith of that person comes he enters into the experience 
of that word that's why god is resting but he says there remained a rest not for god for his people what is that rest the experience of his finished work so we keep moving around with ignorance and making a fool out of ourselves and demons are happy and hope we continue like that and then at the end of it the equation does not add up and then we are frustrated and humiliated is god helping us tonight tonight we are going to look at the second aspect and that is discipleship the dominion mandate has three segments number one is a revelation of the original plan the fall of man and the restoration through jesus that's the first the second is discipleship what is discipleship a system of training for reigning a system of reprogramming a system of recalibration into the image and the likeness and then next week we are going to look at the third segment governance so these three segments number one the original plan the fall of man and the restoration process that we call redemption the second is discipleship discipleship is not some some doctrinal curriculum of people no it is the way people are trained to carry out the dominion mandate listen nobody reigns just because you have received jesus remember the scripture that i gave you last week right that they that received two things number one the gift of righteousness number two the abundance of grace so two requirements to reign one you must receive what the gift of righteousness no man can walk it is god's very nature imputed through faith when you believed in the finished work of his son his death the burial the resurrection and the glorification not just the resurrection jesus did not just ascend and is hanging in the sky he is seated it matters because efficient starts with the revelation of his seated position so it's not just the death i know great men like kenyon and all of that talk about the death burial resurrection but it's more than that the death the burial the resurrection and the glorification that coronation was what david saw the lord said to my lord the lord the ancient of days said to my lord the christ sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool hallelujah discipleship why why discipleship let me tell you something because you see when you receive jesus christ everybody listen carefully when you receive jesus christ automatically it gives you access the life of god is in you give us genesis chapter 1 please verse 26 god created man there was a twofold design and this design this configuration must be gotten back for man to be able to walk in dominion number one is what his image the first purpose of discipleship is to carve in you the experience of the image of the christ the spiritual dimension the spiritual composition are we together now paul said this he says my little children in whom i travail until christ be formed in you the formation of christ in reality the indwelling of the word is a reflection of his image because the bible says let us make man in our own image and the bible says christ who is the word is the express image of the godhead he that has seen me has seen the father are we together now philip said show us the father and then he sufficient he said philip have you been so long with me philip and yet you have not seen the father whoever has seen me has seen the father so christ came as the image so man must first be made in christ now listen let us make process let us make process the moment that life of god comes the making is not automatic the life is there 
the spirit of god is at work in you if it were automatic then you do not need the word and you do not need the, the ministry of the holy spirit the formation of christ now please everybody listen this is one of the indices for spiritual growth the moment believers get born again if you have ever wondered what next let me tell you what next is the spiritual development of those people so that the life the character and the traits of christ will be fashioned in them are we together now the image so pastors apostles prophets evangelists together that five-fold ministry they work harmoniously to help people achieve this are we together the image of christ being formed in you that's what you call character that's what you call the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the recreated human spirit when you read galatians chapter 5 verse 16 paul was teaching the galatian church and he said this i say then please give it to us galatians 5 and verse 16 we'll read 16 then we'll go down to 22 he says this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh so the key is what walking in the spirit you must be trained to walk in the spirit the bible says to set your minds on the things above and not on the things of the earth it takes a training the name of that training is discipleship discipleship is not just an indoctrination into a church's curriculum and beliefs are we together because many of us hate the word and i understand because it has been used religiously by people who are not even born again discipleship is how people are made to reign verse 22 it says but the fruit of the spirit there are all kinds of theological understandings but the fruit of the spirit is love listen joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance he said against such there is no law meaning that it is impossible to be a violator with these conditions this is the atmosphere of the spirit the fruit of the spirit combined creates an atmosphere that becomes formidable no power and force of hell can penetrate that all these things you call the fruit of the spirit are and they are ingredients that structure something the bible says that we are built into a spiritual house like living stones one block upon the other you are adding love joy peace patience gentleness let me tell you every attack on a believer's life comes when there is a lapse in one of these are you hearing what i'm saying listen are, are we learning am i am i blessing you every attack on your life will come based on an advantage that was taken as a result of the absence or the deficiency of this from where comet um how does the bible put it quarreling and all this among you you see that when there is no love there will be jealousy when there is no love there will be bitterness when there is no joy the bible says for with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation is that true it says the joy of the lord is your strength when your spirit is weak there is no joy joy is not laughter joy can only be given by the spirit unbelievers have happiness only believers can have joy is of the holy ghost joy has nothing to do with circumstances it is a state of being that is based on a revelation and the presence of the holy ghost count it all joy my brethren when you go through die how can you rejoice knowing this knowing this this is the secret of the joy knowing this without knowing it you cannot have joy so when you are going through diverse situations you lost a loved one you lost a job something is not working well ordinarily you should be sad but knowing this there is a revelation that the trying of your faith work at patience and then that let patience have her full course then it will make you mature it will make you unfruitful knowing this hallelujah are we blessed we must build the fruit of the spirit in people you can be educated as educated as anything and lack gentleness goodness meekness 
and never be promoted correct you went to school but you are not gentle at all the company throws you away because you lack the fruit of the spirit do you know all the the commandments of nigeria are a human attempt to get men to have the fruit of the spirit so when they tell you pay a bill of hundred thousand naira and all of this is their own way of trying to force you to feel the pain of stealing somebody's thing it is their way of trying to give you love when they jail you because of impatience they are trying to get you to be what to have long suffering because you are not patient that's why you wanted one million in one day and you jumped somebody's fence or you stopped a luxurious bus let me tell you the chaos in our society is because there is the absence of the image the charisma, the image of christ every law when you whip your child it is because he violated something that is here when a husband beats a wife something is missing peace sister when a brother comes to say i want to marry i want to marry you do you know why you don't say yes immediately you go back and start cross-checking you don't even know this is what you are cross-checking does this guy love me it's not just love god alone does he have joy this brother is an angry brother peace i watch what he did to somebody one day long suffering this guy looks like a hustler he puts his hand in everything is he gentle no the way he approached me was bad is he good no he's greedy does he have faith he come you know and all of that and when you calculate all those things the other side of the equation creates your response and you go back and say no now you may not know that this is what you were checking when someone is advising you he's helping you society can never go into decadence when the image of christ is enforced the image of christ is the unifier whether you are from kogi state plateau state listen to me whether you are yoruba or Igbo, all those disparity in culture that is as a result of bad habits can be neutralized if the image of christ is formed in believers so when you see someone who is hausa and someone who is um Igbo or someone who is yoruba or someone who is from the south south four of them you will not see any noticeable differences why because they have allowed the genes of adam that was a part of the course that came through their earth and programmed something oh the men from this place are stupid the men from this place are irresponsible when you allow the character are we learning the dominion mandate it says man was made in the image it was not possible for adam to hate it was not possible for him to be impatient how did man fall because there was a pastor that said something satan became that preacher that's why when god came he said who told you not who showed you a voice reprogrammed you so how will men return back to this a voice will reprogram men the spirit of god is in his words as you are hearing this something is happening to you you are now seeing that this is not the issue of marry from here or from here this is not the issue of i am from bielsa i am from south south in our place this is how we do it all those our place when you talk like that let me show you whose descendant you are on earth there are two families one those who are connected to adam and everything adam came with two those who have been redeemed 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 into another family so you cannot look at me and say you come from so so place your people are drunkards i don't know who they are i've been called out of every tribe genesis please give us revelations 5 verse 9 i want you to read it god has to deliver us verse 9 1 2 no gen um revelations 5 media 5 verse 9 revelations revelations let's read it one okay verse 9 5 verse 9 thank you okay read it one to go and they sung a new song uh-huh saying thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed me unto god how by your blood out of kogi plateau state 
Imo Enugu out of the irresponsibility that comes with the men in that place out of the pride out of the selfishness out of the hatred the bitterness he has redeemed I've been called I sympathize with my people but I'm not part of that tragedy I am another tribe I've been carved out listen if you don't believe this thing you are not a Christian it's not just that it's bad you are not a Christian at all what else do you believe we have been called that's why in Koinonia here you don't see anybody do anything which tribe I don't even want to know where you are coming from I know that there are two families the ones on earth and the ones in heaven were all related the blood the veil torn a family no we no man after the flesh oh your father is this i'm not saying don't be sympathetic to people in your area or whatever jesus started preaching from the jews but some of this carnality this tribalism and this these garbages we bring there is a thief in every tribe there is a fool in every tribe there is a devil in every tribe every tribe has witches and wizards there are poor people in every tribe so it's just that we, you know we make it look just because you saw more northerners looking stupid you come up with a theology that there are all more Igbo people and say every Igbo person is it's just money monger it's a lie there are people who have exempted themselves called out not everybody is a money monger not every lady is a materialistic person just looking for a millionaire it's a lie not everybody is an irresponsible person not knowing where he will go some people have seen the end they have seen you know what i'm doing to you is a reprogramming this is discipleship i am unifying you now it is on the strength of this you can call somebody brother and sister that issue of brother and sister for many people is carnal it's just carnal because you were told to say it brother um, alpha brother femi and the rest but when men like kenneth e hagen rw shambach when they used those names it was out of this revelation i do not know you in the flesh but if you are in christ we are brothers you are welcome they extend the right hand of fellowship everybody say the image we need the restoration of that image there are many people who are not spiritual live likeness we're coming there we must teach you how to be like Christ be like Christ be like Christ that's the image the image talks of being the likeness talks of doing the image talks of being being who you are not what you do let's go back to Genesis please give us verse 28 we'll discuss more 28 um, next next week 1 verse 28 Genesis now everybody I want you to observe something and God blessed them and said listen carefully be fruitful he never talked of having anything you be it first then later on he now said have dominion so god's focus when he's beginning to work with man is in being first before having we have reversed it somebody gets born again today and we say you must have you must have a car you must have a house which is he he's having something he has not become he's trying to have the likeness no image so one million naira comes he has but he has not become so it will destroy him are you saying that now yes have a wife but he has not become a husband so it destroys him the primary strategy and pattern God's kingdom pattern for discipling people and nation is to focus on their being before they are having listen those who write programs for foundational classes in churches must subscribe to this otherwise you are going to produce a powerless carnal many times devilish believers that's why there are witches and wizards in church because we are passionate about having 
so if i am born again and in two weeks i come with a flashy shoe flashy cloth i'm showing you how much i help me preach back to me i'm showing you how much i on the strength of that you will say i have faith and the brother who has just one trouser but the gift of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is working in him we look at him and we say no this one you don't have so because you don't have the word is not working our focus is on having spiritual men rank and rate people first by being so i can look at you and all you have is one trouser one bible but i see christ formed in you you are on your way fulfilling the dominion mandate i know that this guy will soon be a principality listen believers let me preach to you stop focusing on having focus on being first the image comes before the likeness is god speaking to us this is a message to someone already because our society is full of falsehood men and women who are obsessed in having having why because we want to prove we live in a carnal world that only interprets and rates you based on what they can relate with none of these fruits of the spirit is something that is tangible in itself their manifestation can be tangible as you relax you relate with people and environment but you cannot know so i look at this brother and what he has is peace what he has is joy and i think those things are cheaper than money so the brother would rather kill the agenda to being and then focus on having when god begins to deal with a man you find out that the curriculum he gives you has nothing to do with things like teaching of prosperity it's going to be prayer first you are filled with the holy ghost are we together and then you begin to teach he's drumming on you issues of character holiness morality you have to greet people you move around and think i am from this i am a yo-yo guy I, and he says look drop all that thing oh i am the nobody talks to me i was a capon in this and god says that's that's your business and when you want to mess up he tells you listen nebuchadnezzar was not what he had he had money he had power so he could run his mouth and talk nonsense and then he was made to become a beast for how many years seven years a beast with the brain of a man the moment nebuchadnezzar recovered he became a preacher read your bible never empower people who have not become it's dangerous it's a lesson many of us will have to learn that you are a millionaire does not mean you carry a small child who has not become and give him money that's why i like Igbo people when they are doing business they bring in an apprentice no matter how rich that man is there is a limit to the exposure of that child is that true he now begins to do business and they study him one day they will leave money in the drawer five hundred thousand, and throw some small things scattered and then the man will go out he will come back and find out that one thousand was missing and he will keep quiet that boy has not become the day he ever says settle me the man will say i will slap you. if you ever talk of settling you have not become you want to have you have not learned integrity you have not learned character you have not learned submission no hmm. is god teaching us being have you become an expression many of us today i can show you that the reality of god's image has not been found formed in you because that anger is still there you've been born again for five years you pray in tongues more than everybody but let somebody just say something small your name is sam and somebody just said uh, john uh, sorry what's the name you don't know my name look i i i know who i am if you do this is you think it's a sign that you are spiritual no no i can look at your life and rank you spiritually in a moment i don't have to see a vision away with your cars away with all the money and the checks and all the prestige and the english and etc all those things could not having I look at your life when i look at your life i'm searching for the christ the word of god already painted a picture and then he says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus then the bible says he had something and was something but he gave them up and became became 
became not possessed the possession happened when he became therefore god had so highly exalted him and given notice that people first became before they had the secular system reverses it packaging and falsehood is trying to portray something you are not so i borrow a shoe i borrow a suit i borrow watch are we together i borrow makeup i borrow hair i borrow anything what am i trying to do it's not that i i'm trying to show you i'm not cheap bottom line correct whether i'm cheap or not is 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 my own issue but i want you to know i am so conscious of what your perception about me that i don't mind faking everything around it but someone can sit down with gary and say no problem i'm not ashamed this is where i am now i will take it with honor and dignity if i don't look if i look cheap to you like that no problem i agree with the process but i am becoming next time somebody looks at you and tries to make you feel like you are a useless person you you cannot do this and that no problem you are becoming you are becoming line upon line this is what is happening to you in koinonia many of you do not know what is happening to you god has already given you a vision you will be a great prophet a great apostle but you are saying oh god nobody has seen me god says sit down you are becoming you want to have access to the mic you want to have access to a church your body is itching you to have access to lead a program and god says sit down you first become before you have is god speaking to us discipleship leaders learn to discern people who have become before you give them access don't give people access as a general thing if there are four people three people you now say oh you have given you too much access let me share it with this no in the kingdom distribution is be, be as a result of a careful study i have discerned you can fake all those things and act like it but the truth is that if you are not it will show he said by their fruits not by their gifts by their how do you know them by their a gift is dash a fruit is a sign of maturity so someone insults you and says emeka do you know that when you were entering the university i already had phd and that thing stings you and you're like i'm a doctor oh, don't talk and the old man adam adam wants to resurrect with his foolishness and all of a sudden that regining has been crystallized and you laugh and say god bless you ah, ah. and he says is it the emeka that i know that used to beat everybody i heard of a regining let me tell you if you claim you are born again and there is no evidence of transformation you need help you need counseling you need a retreat praise the lord there are so many there are angry pastors there are wicked pastors there are angry people there are all kinds of arrogant people my name is so 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 and so and so do you know the one you we, we are looking at you and we are still seeing your culture if i still look at you and see your village then you are trying to say that calling out of tribe and nation has gone it's not it's not yet real discipleship training for reigning bringing you into the culture of the kingdom their way of life this is how we live in the kingdom we live through the law of love we live through the law of joy we are peaceful people in the kingdom ah my temper will kill somebody oh somebody hold me you are you are acting the moment you are acting like your village the old man is attempting to resurrect you must keep it dead we do these things and usually there are also other carnal people like us who hail us you know that hailing thing can be so demonic if we are not careful <clears throat> remember they hailed jesus and they said hail king of the jews a few weeks later on the same people said crucify him he say you say yes you are looking at me crucify him let his blood be on our head we have to be careful 
there is one who deserves to be lifted and held forever our job is to confirm into that image here we stand David Dam's song and lift our hands and we will hail Yahweh hail Yahweh here we stand and lift our voices together we hail Yahweh hail Yahweh we will hail So your first assignment to believers is to make them spiritual the first assignment of a man of God to believers is to extract carnality carnality means a way of living they must be aware of the divine life the divine nature the presence of the Holy Spirit you turn people to become spiritual the life of God is in me I'm not ordinary. I was born by an ordinary man, an ordinary woman from social state. But now, I am a possessor of God's life. Literally. Not just some Christian gimmicks. No, I believe it. It's a fact. It's true. How many believers are aware of that divine nature in them? It tells the way we respond. The Bible says, He that cometh from above is above all he that cometh from above he that cometh from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly i come from above born of god whatsoever is born of god overcome it overcome it overcome it challenges are not unusual defeat is what is unusual whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcomes even our faith but as many as believed him even to them that believed upon his name gave them power to become power to become power to become power to become they looked at paul ah, ah. paul who used to kill people saul that would collect a letter and go and slaughter people what happened spirituality listen this is not an issue of being charismatic if you don't train your people to be supernatural to approach life and approach things with the consciousness of the divine life the consciousness of divinity there are great men of god all around the world who have spent their lives and spent the years of their lives bringing the church into a consciousness reprogramming and recalibrating our mind that the believer in partnership with the holy spirit is invincible we must restore these teachings there are many carnal believers on earth in a bit to balance in a bit to teach we have made people carnal helpless no matter what happens they say oh well things just happen like this no you are in every way divine that's why we don't walk in signs and wonders how do you stand and stretch your hands to somebody and expect a transference how do you do that how do you stand and speak there is no wire tied to you to someone outside because carnally speaking i can only see with my optical eyes but when you step back and and walk in the realm of the spirit then you know that the vistas of the spirit are not 2020 infinity infinity left only to your faith so i can stand here and see someone in overflow three and speak and expect the power of god to touch that person why i wasn't born this way it's called spirituality there's too much carnality that's why when you tell people god will bless you they still want you to they want to reduce themselves and many pastors this is the limitation of exaggeration on education when you think that because i'm educated i have a master's in this i have a phd in that now there are very educated people in this place but when people trust their education and then you see them castigate spiritual things 
anything that does not subscribe to the law of dy dx they fight it are we together mm. you anoint somebody say what is this with this oil they write all kinds of articles titan is a scam by men of god to raise money you see them and then at the end of that ungodly blog they now say my name is pastor so so and so i'm a pastor with living christ parish or whatever it is and that is deceptive because somebody will say ah, this is a pastor and you know carnal people will relate to those things immediately because they are carnally minded are we together anything that massages the flesh they like it once you challenge people why should you come and spend the night praying what is all this blah, 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 thing 10 hours five hours three hours please we are not human beings god gave us a brain and they say that to castigate spirituality the bible says through faith hebrews chapter 10 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 through faith we understand please give it to us through faith we understand that the world systems 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 were framed by what please help me they were not framed by cement and water they were framed by an invisible substance called the word of god so that the things which were seen were not made of things which do appear that's why god tells somebody that by this time next year you will be a landlord and spirit wants to receive but the carnality in his mind will fight it how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and he says have you forgotten the power of the highest this is the mystery that makes things happen i want to show you why we don't get results god has declared that this is a year of triumph but only spiritual people can receive a carnal man receives not the things of the spirit neither can he understand them why because they are spiritually discerned let me tell you how to know you are not growing by how much you rely so much on your senses and how embarrassed you are to be spiritual about life because there are people who are embarrassed to be spiritual not just that they don't like it it's a thing of shame it's a thing of shame oh you are playing and just playing a worship song and it's entering your spirit i beg we are human beings a worship song entering my spirit what is there you are listening to all kinds of music you don't know the difference are you seeing now many people in church you have a selection there's gospel music there's another one by a a, 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 a secular artist that you want i don't have a problem with secular artists i only have this a problem with the spirits behind them i love them as people but there's a spirit behind them music is not all about melodies Music is about sounds and the access that those sounds give spirits into your life. So someone tells you, look, I went to school. This I went to school. He said, much learning make thee mad. I went to school. Please allow me to play this song. So you just play women of faith for a while. Just to ease the guilt of feeling carnal. Then somewhere in the selection, something just comes. Babylon babylon then to witchcraft to witchcraft and you are lying down your body is sleeping your spirit does not sleep and something is happening to you how many of you have listened to a message and fell asleep and it continued playing and you followed it how many of you were sleeping and you were acting what that message was saying it now becomes graphic not just that you are hearing suddenly you find yourself in scenarios doing certain things making confessions these are spiritual things the ancient knew this we who are modern people have become so bankrupt of spirituality pastors let your people be spiritual don't pity them because they prayed five minutes and they're feeling tired and you say no you know our church there are balloons everywhere let's not make people feel you are praying and somebody falls down and the way his head hits the the, the chair even you, you say Kai. hallelujah amen let's stop why do you stop a baby when he's walking and he tries to fall you allow them hi yes you say sorry but you don't stop the work we must be spiritually minded that's why the gifts of the spirit cannot flow in us we're not spiritual that's why you cannot believe 
that God can open you up. That's why when you hear testimonies, the testimonies come to a carnal mind and you start looking at the people scientifically. I hope they are lying. Hepatitis, cancer. This lady that I know, how about Allah? It's just that koinonia where everybody will just keep quiet, but me, we, we, we know at that where you blind, blind when? Because of how people are carnally minded. There are people who don't believe anything. Even if they see somebody fall down, they will still say somebody pushed him somewhere. Hapa. Believers. You know, sometimes when people argue, I say, ah, ah. Prophecy. You hear them say they gave somebody the names of people. Maybe there are people doing it. But is it easy to, re to, to keep names? Try it. Is it easy to act like that? Carnality. Because we are not spiritually minded. If by next week God opens a door for David down, we can look and people will now say, This guy, he taught something. We always credit unusual happenings to the realm of the spirit. That is a clue that to remain unusual, you must remain in the spirit. You are like mere men, there is nothing worth celebrating. The dominion mandate is a restoration into a life of spirituality. That the spirit realm governs the physical realm yes it does the spirit realm you must build yourself the divine nature of god the character of god the second dimension let's look at it quickly is the likeness please give it to us again genesis 1 26 likeness talks of the functionality how god functions the image of God talks about who God is, his being. But his likeness talks of how he walks. Mm. Believers, there are some of you who God saved many people through your hands. But you don't know how to build them. Because you have not been taught. The first thing is to help them become spiritual. That's why when we... When people get born again here we introduce them to the prayer department not just to be workers in the house why because praying they are filled with the holy ghost they are praying you begin to teach them the value of the word of god you begin to teach them the value of communion you begin to teach them the value of corporate fellowship these are foundations then when they are strong then you begin to teach them how to walk like god you start teaching them speech everybody say speech the first teaching on how to function like god is how to speak like him hmm. you reign you reign you reign you reign kadosh you are mighty on your throne you reign you reign you reign you reign, God of God, you are mighty on your throne. Then you begin to learn that he has made us unto our God. Listen, kings and priests. Your priesthood talks of your ministry to God. Your ministry spiritually. That kingly dimension talks of governance and legislature. As a priest, the jurisdiction is a secret place. The place of incense. The place of ministry where you send that incense, it will rise to heaven. The prayers of the saints, the intercession, fellowship, communion, koinonia, that's priesthood. Then you take away that priestly regalia and you put on your crown and your signet ring and you hold your scepter and step out. That is legislature. That is governance everyone must manifest this king priest dimension you are a priest when you come to the house of god you are ministering to god you are offering up worship and intercession for the saints you are advocating for the destinies of men you are communing with god almighty that's priesthood then you take on that regalia of kingship and then you legislate and the bible says where the word of a king is there is please help me 
where the word of a common man is there is sound but where the word of a king is so i have been made a king and a priest not unto my village unto god and so i can legislate listen the first thing that must begin to change in your life to prove that you are functioning like god is your speech your speech ah we are the weak ones we are the ones who are this and that uh -uh. you know the bible says do not say before an angel i made a mistake your speech it matters are we together your your words begin to be cultured by the word of god you don't speak all kinds of things and invoke woes upon yourself your communications become spiritual bless you good morning sir oh aluta continua victoria is Carter. you are prophesying others are speaking they are not kings but you you have become a believer you have been redeemed yet you are still speaking you have come out of egypt egypt is still in you and now when you speak you are sending sounds to the realm of the spirit and you are programming things they speak and it doesn't happen you speak and it happens the suffering continues you massage hardship pressure puts you and pushes you and everything that comes out is your hey why you why you and, and you, you all this kind of very very unbelieving talk hallelujah you hear a bad report in the name of jesus christ a thousand may fall by my right that's a king speaking ten thousand by my by my right side none shall harm me only with my eyes will i see and behold uh, uh, the reward of the wicked ah i will make sure you don't marry and she tells you to your face and you smile a cause causeless shall not stand there is a mystery that no you see all this threat the, the woman said this ah uh -uh, a cause causeless shall not stand are we together yes will you ever finish this house the hand of zerubbabel that started this work it's not something you just reminisce in your mind it must be vocalized it must be vocalized i am the head and not the tail i am above and not beneath the gentiles come to my light lord favor surrounds me like a shield this is a believer talking let me tell you what ordinary people would do the people in our villages know this you see what they do during festivals the major activity in festival is talking and dancing then death follows later on in the evening people start dying because people are talking talking chanting things you are moving around you just sense a presence that is not of god and don't sit and say Kai, i'm not sure be sure by praying in tongues start tongues first let let praying in tongues precede you while you are verifying so that should in case you can be praying and hear a shout from another room and say oh i see There are human beings that carry spirits they are innocent they're on the way they're on their way coming to your house to introduce spirits not unwillingly but all of a sudden you sense an urge and you begin to pray and they call you and say sorry i just feel like not coming and you know that not only have they revealed something to you they themselves need to be helped you can easily know the spirits that control men by their reaction when you pray because the spirit influenced them to act in certain ways that's why many of you when you finish praying in your house that's the day everybody quarrels you i teach you the mystery now the moment you pray agitations from everyone you go you enter your room and the kindest person in your room is attacking you the devil is sending a response if you know you attack him back with joy 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 when you turn to canada don't shout at me yes i'm coming back from koinonia say you claim you're coming back from the church and look at how you match this i'm sorry it's okay you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne break forth thou fountains of the deep and weep kadosh so you learn how to speak by faith mark 11 
22 23 if thou shalt say give it to us jesus is teaching the disciples how kings speak he's teaching them the language of royalty listen this thing is not just some some you know many believers after working for a while we claim that those who do these things are baby christians it's a joke a principle that jesus himself introduced nothing in your life will ever change until you sustain capacity to command it to he told job has thou commanded thy morning if you don't command it something else will impregnate your morning and jesus answering said unto them have faith in god the correct rendition there is have the faith of god operate like him for verily i say unto you now whoever shall say to what say to what so it is okay to speak to things not just to human beings jesus our high priest spoke to a mountain spoke to a tree who told you they don't hear biology did not teach you that they hear but jesus the spiritual teaches you that they can hear who told you the earth does not hear who told you that when you stand and speak over your family miles and kilometers apart they don't hear so you can stand and begin to legislate they call you at home and they say in the last three days everybody has been sick you say okay i know what to do and sometimes it's not just becoming a priest you jam the door put your crown carry your regalia Zekatos i send the wind on errand carry the anointing from here to that location you must believe this thing i'm teaching you i'm programming you to be spiritual and how to function like god if thou shalt say unto this mountain be thou removed that means when you speak to things you must be specific specific give us this day what do you want ah, i want i want to do well that's a vague and careless prayer you must call it by name whatsoever adam called that was the name thereof so you name your destiny peace you name your marriage joy are we together you don't turn and say this stupid husband no way my marriage is heaven on earth i call it what it is I refuse to be poor i reject it it doesn't glorify god it doesn't help me fulfill my assignment i decree and declare favor surrounds me if there is a garrison of favor men are coming to bless me today this is a king speaking you are impregnating your morning while others are sleeping you are speaking Shagato kaskariada. favor comes in the name of jesus no accidents no nothing I am immune to activities of witches. I am above. I come from above. While you are speaking, somebody is sleeping and laughing at you. By evening, they tell you the person is in the hospital. When he comes back home, he will never laugh at you again when you are speaking. That laughter is, a, is mockery. Mockery is initiated by a spirit. When Jesus wanted to raise the dead and he said the dead was sleeping, People who were crying turned and started laughing they mocked him and said get out of the house go out get out of the house i want to raise the dead and when he was alone he said little girl talita kumi i say unto you arise are we together yeah when abraham had a conversation and he heard that god was speaking about a child sarah had it and laughed that laugh was sarcasm one of the proofs that somebody has a wicked spirit living in him is how sarcastic he is when believers make faith proclamations over their destiny you see someone while he's jumping his shoe has already caught and you laugh you see that kind of laughter is a spirit it's not just an act it's not just a negative disposition that's why when we say pray and speak and other people stand and they're wondering ah, ah, you mean this is how these people speak that's what that's what brought us here we acted like him Shabranda Kaskia, in the name of jesus people are blessed tonight the miracle service is a blessing koinonia is a blessing everything flourishes in this ministry because a word waters it words are powerful god rules the earth by the word of his power so you learn the speech of the kingdom 
you learn how to manifest faith but one of the things that you also learn are the systems of the kingdom i'm teaching you how to be like god let me teach you a deep mystery our time is gone i'll teach you this and then we'll just pray we'll continue next week have you been blessed god never does anything in the bible as a process twice read your bible god's system is to initiate things once and build a system around them for continuity believers hear me i want to teach you how to function like god that's why many businesses fail that's why many people cannot carry out the dominion mandate we'll discuss it next week when we talk of governance he says be fruitful then he says what multiply replenish subdue you can't do those things if you do not understand god's system so god initiates a process as a template then designs a system around it watch this god created man as her dispensation knows once and never had to create man again are we together he created man with the woman in him and then he brought the woman out and designed a system in them and says continue the result of that reproduction 7.2 billion people on the earth in spite of an average of eight people that die per second the earth is still growing because a man built a system systems are powerful are you hearing what i'm saying systems are what powerful when you do business by repeating the same thing you are not acting like god you create a product this is what many people have done google and all of that they don't know about you yet you carry their laptop because there is a system they made it once that's why coca-cola and the rest they have different branches around the world what did they program in those branches systems everybody say systems the greatest conglomerates in the world today operate through systems the same thing happening everywhere the catholics roman catholics i love them among other reasons because of the power and the dexterity of their systems systems maintain consistency it is how god functions god has not needed even when man fell when he was about to wipe the people in noah's days he still preserved the seed and out of those eight families new beginning he started another race systems jesus came as the firstborn of the begotten he died and nobody has had to die for his sins again a system of salvation whoever believes in him shall not perish are we blessed yes africans do not understand the systems of the kingdom so we do the same thing again and again do you know why god created things like videos systems so i don't have to preach the same message twice i preach it once and it is captured in a system and while i'm sleeping i am multiplying the influence to millions of people it's called systems don muen has never met with you yet you have been blessed by his ministry the anointing also obeys systems that's why everybody in every corner listening to don muen's songs will feel the anointing think about it you are not a leader if you do not master building systems when i learned this principle it made my life easy look at how god built a system god himself transferred governance to man and programmed that man and handed the earth to him systems now man is mishandling the earth largely but it's a system the first crops that came out of the earth the bible says god himself planted i hope you know read your bible god planted trees systems and then in the tree he built systems what is another name for that system a seed this is how god operates a seed is not money a seed is a mystery that represents the system of continuity continuity in every man born of a woman there is a seed that represents potentials for continuity in every woman there is a womb that receives a seed as potentials for continuity so once there is a seed and there is a womb there is reproduction hear me once there is a seed and there is a womb there is what reproduction a seed without a womb cannot bring reproduction a womb without a seed 
cannot bring reproduction you need to find the wombs of there are many wombs on earth a woman's womb is only an adumbration of many other wombs the morning has a womb every day has a womb you can impregnate it with words and it will give birth in the daytime the pregnancy that happened in the night can be delivered for you in the daytime your mind is a womb information are the seeds when you plant informations in your mind like a woman gets pregnant over time it will deliver to you and change your life are we blessed God never does the same thing twice when you find out that you are trying to do the same thing as a leader the dominion mandate is not working in your life there must be a system of continuity let me tell you it's one of the reasons why we never grow and never flourish how you know there is no system in your life is that your absence stops continuity when your absence stops continuity then there is no system so you are the ceo of the company you travel for two weeks you come back and meet hellfire there's no system nobody knows what to do no system if i'm not around for one year in koinonia it will still continue running the only thing that will be missed is my unique grace and anointing why systems hmm. that's how pastors should train pastors you should be if 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 pastor alpha pastor femi and promise are all my pastors for instance if you hear pastor alpha you should not feel bad that i was not there that systems i have reproduced myself in him when you hear him you will miss me i love it every time i'm not around and people send me a text they say apostle we miss you but god koinonia was fire i said that's right systems but because of our inferiority and this village mindset that we have grown with every time you are not around and things don't work you are happy do you know why that's why many leaders do not mentor and train others because they think it is their way by exclusively capturing knowledge and keeping it how many people have died with secrets that can turn the lives of people how about anointings no if he carries the same anointing as i'm carrying will he ever respect me again look at god he didn't wait for you to be renewed he gave you the holy spirit straight up immediately after confession he granted you the holy spirit he didn't say change no he granted you the holy spirit to help you part of the ways that we rule and dominate is by building systems around things your prosperity is not something that is in the hands of god today your prosperity has been programmed in a system are you hearing what i'm saying god can in the systems are supervised so it's not like they are random there is still an individual supervising them the same way you put systems you can come and look at it and you can decide to influence it that's a sign that you are the owner of the system somebody can slaughter someone as a thief and go back home and get his wife pregnant that system will not stop because he's a wicked man now you'll go to hell if he doesn't repent but as far as that pregnancy is concerned an unbeliever who does not know god taps into god's system of wealth and abundance hallelujah i was telling the school of ministry students that there's something i'm going to teach them about finances that i've not touched and i've not taught any of the sets ah it's a revelation that god gave me that i mean if I teach you that and you don't prosper, I don't know how to help you again. I, I don't know how to help you. Systems. Let me give you a little tip of the iceberg. That being employed forever till retirement is a cause. Because in God's system, you start under people. But eventually, the goal is for you to be established yourself. So the spirit of servitude is such that you continue to serve a man. If you, not everybody will have platforms like churches, businesses. But even under those platforms, there must allocate a place that allows your grace to function. 
that is the spirit of God and is the program of God. That's why he carved out earth and gave man. But he gave man delegated authority. That means it is exousia, but it is still supervised. So he can call man to order like Pharaoh could still call Joseph to order. But Pharaoh did not interrupt. It is the system we run koinonia with. That's why sometimes you never come and see me check. Ah, have the leaders fixed this flower well? Systems. There are men of God. You are preaching. You are preparing sermon. They just call you and say one wire has caught. You bike by yourself to Sabo and buy the wrong wire and bring it back. Before you finish, you, you forgot everything. And then you are stressing yourself. When you are doing everything by yourself, it's a sign that you are not functioning like God let me show you why many of our parents are under stress they did not mentor the young people so they kept doing everything now the youngest person in the family is 31 yet is still father and mother that is providing food because they did not teach them how education does not teach you how it just enlightens your mind it is mentorship it is discipleship that teaches you how so a man of god starts a ministry and there are ordinary people and then you start teaching them how to prosper you show them the pathways to the anointing are we together you don't hide it there's nothing to hide these are the secrets you guide them you mentor them they receive measures of that anointing that is upon you you have built a system and then they begin to function the key to hardship is to not be able to reproduce yourself through systems you will pay the price and you will never last everything that has lasted and outlived the founders subscribe to function like god we're going to pray dominion the chaos in our society today is because we have not conformed to his image and his likeness his divine nature and his functionality you see why it's important to get people saved because that is the condition that can guarantee the potentials for dominion ye must be born again that's why we make altar calls that's why we're still going to make altar call tonight because there are people scattered inside outside who need jesus now most preachers don't tell you why they just say come to jesus there is a hellfire somewhere to burn the living daylight out of you and you run out of fear you are born again and you don't know what you ran from and to what dominion this is not just the issue of heaven it does not take so much to be assured of heaven because it's not something you do by yourself but when it has to do with your reigning listen the degree to which you have become like god in his image and his likeness is the degree to which you measure your success and your prosperity are you seeing why life cooperates with others life cooperates with god and everybody who functions like him life was designed to cooperate with god alone if you are not god life will not cooperate with you so our needless sufferings and pains is because we have fabricated methodologies by ourselves attempting to get god's result our way let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your own someone is rising beyond every shadow every shackle please rise up on your feet let hope rise darkness trembles in your own Let hope, let it rise tonight. Darkness trembles in your Listen, I want you to look at your life carefully. We're going to pray now. You can trace every negative thing to your life, to your inability to have conformed to the image or the likeness there are troubles and sicknesses that have come to us today high blood pressure because of worry when the
peace and the joy of God is in you. Listen, there is no drug that can give you peace. There is no drug that can give you joy. When you smoke cocaine and snuff all kinds of things, they don't give you peace. They attempt it. You know why people try getting high and they take substance? They are looking for peace. They are looking for joy. They are attempting to use things. Life was designed to respond to you once you are a possessor of the gift of righteousness and then abundance of grace that comes through knowledge through knowledge the bible says good understanding giveth favor but the way of the transgressor is hard could it be hear me that this is the missing link in your ministry could it be that this is the missing link in your business could it be that this is the missing link in your family why are things not working i'm always fighting with my wife i think i made a mistake i married a wrong woman it's a lie i think i and my children are stubborn there may be something you are fighting your children because you are trying to force them you are violating something about the dominion mandate you don't force people you give them a revelation you force your children to wear your, the clothes you want you force them to read the course you want every time you force men rebellion is inevitable that's why the children revolt but when you give them a revelation you see that God never forces us I set before you life and death I set before you blessing and cursing but here's my advice choose life why so that you can live in other words I want you to live and if you must live the key is choosing life not I force you to live that's what parents are doing and that's why children revolt when you resort back to giving them revelations look it looks like i'm hard on you but it's because i love you i've made mistakes in my own life and i want you to be a great gentleman i'm proud of you and i see potentials that gentleman by himself will start talking in well by himself will stop dressing like rags and remove all those things and start babbing well and not looking like a thief the gentleman will subscribe immediately because you gave them revelation but when you use force on people you are acting as the antichrist man was not mentioned in every element that was given that man should dominate man was not given there are pastors that dominate members and they never see they are anointed but people never like them they can walk into your house any day anytime cook for me fry chips for me i'm a man of god add this and that for me after all elijah told the shunammite elijah did not force her home. the woman had a right to refuse what was satan allowed to do to the believer and what was he not allowed to do what is the believer allowed to do in terms of exercising authority over spirits you we want to learn authority you have to examine the life of jesus because jesus is the most accurate portrait of god in terms of exercising authority the prophets and all the people before him and after him because they were men the Bible never gave a word of approval for them from God. So we know that Jesus came as a pattern man to reveal to the believer how to walk in authority. When you notice that in casting out devils, Jesus never told the spirits where to go to. Only once that he, got, he granted their request because they wanted to enter swine. And he did not say go, he just said go. Every time Jesus casted spirits, he did not define a place for them to go and stay. In fact, if Jesus said anything, he gave us intelligence that spirits have the liberty of mobility. Mobility from any place back to the vessel that they came out from. That when a spirit is casted out of a man, is that in your Bible? That he goes through dry regions and not finding a place, he will say, let me go back to my house. And if he finds it swept and clean but empty, he will get seven other spirits more deadly than itself and return back so that the latter part of that man's life, no wonder you can find people who receive miracles. And then after a while, they go back and their conditions become worse. Jesus gave us an explanation because I have taught you that deliverance does not end by just casting out the spirit influence. When the spirit influence leaves, that is step one. The second phase of deliverance is that the light of God's word must come to give the person a now superior spiritual orientation. And by so doing it, to close that door. 
And then the third dimension of deliverance is called the discipline of conformity, where you now have the responsibility of cooperating with the word to walk in light with the things and the practices that keep Satan at bay. Are we learning now? So the average believer, I can tell you in church, is zealous, loves God, is sincere, but many people may never rise to God's standard, that prophetic potential, because we have not learned properly the fundamentals of redemption. We have a head knowledge. We have a theological knowledge. We can recite what Jesus did, but an understanding of how to convert that reality to become our experience, many believers are at a loss. So we have people who command angels anyhow, I command these angels, do this and that and that. And sometimes, you know, just because we are given authority and angels minister to the saints, there is a modus operandi. Are we together? There are those who even command God and then mistakenly we use the scripture that says, as touching the works of my hand, command ye me. Those things were just error in translation. You cannot command God. No. When I was teaching you, um, let them have dominion. I taught you that when people say God himself is limited until we authorize him, uh, they are sincere, but it's not an accurate spiritual understanding. What we do is not to command God. What we do is to partner with him. You think partnership, not authority over God. Are we together? So I cannot command God because he made me ruler in the earth. No. When God limits his operation until my participation, it is not because he is weak. It's that he has designed a system to incorporate me every time he's functioning on the earth. It's not a product of weakness. Of weakness. It is his wisdom designed to make sure that I participate in that dominion process. But that if God decides to bypass me, he's still just because the earth is still his own. You see that now? So he says, if you will not praise me, it is not the usual rule, but I can raise up stones. Literally and prophetically, I can raise up stones to praise me. Is someone learning now? So the average believer needs, listen, if you want to build a believer to be a person of stature, he needs to come into an understanding of what Jesus has done. When you tell somebody that while you were yet a sinner, unable to help yourself, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel that Jesus saw you he loved you and he came to you not demanding that you give him his life because of the threat for hell he loves you and he's given you an opportunity to be a partaker of his life and the only thing you have to do is to believe that he loved you enough and died for you and that in saying yes to him among the many things that happen to you is that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Now you have been vested with life eternal alongside authority. The potential to manifest the God life has now been given to you. That is why the gospel is called good news. Hallelujah. Now the person can say, you mean with all this my life of drinking, smoking, all this my life of drugs, all this my life of killing and destruction, Jesus can love someone like me? You say yes. Step one, when you bring such a person, now the danger is if that is the only theology that remains with that person, there is trouble because the next assignment is to know that now you are, we are not saved by good works, but we are saved unto good works. That when you now become a believer in Christ, the next thing is that you will begin to understand that there is the partnership with the word and the spirit to conform to the image of the Christ in experience. Are we together now? And then that eternal life that has been transmuted into your spirit cannot manifest just arbitrarily. It's a product of knowledge, understanding and faith. Now you are taught the ways of God. The believer now walks in the appreciation of what Jesus has done, but also rises to a point of responsibility, knowing that I need to not add to what God has done, but partner with what God has done to make it manifest. So sometimes with all due respect, we say things like, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Of course, I know that those who say that are very well intentioned and they are sincere. But from the lens of scripture, that is not an accurate statement. 
How many times have you believed what God has said and agreed with it and confessed it and it did not work? Because it takes more than that. The entire journey of obedience is beyond the realm of confession. Confession is part of the process. But obedience is predicated on understanding. Number one, you need to know the provisions that have been there. Number two, you need to know the conditions allocated for those promises to be made manifest. And then you need to obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with those conditions. That is what is responsible for manifestation. Hallelujah. So I can know that Jesus died, defeated Satan, death, hell, and the grave. I can know that for a fact. But ladies and gentlemen, I can know that I've been translated from every curse. And I can even stand to declare, in the name of Jesus, there is no curse upon my life. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my grandfather worshipped this. My grandmother worshipped this. In the name of Jesus, I am free from it. And yet, after all of that confession, it looks like Satan is just watching you. And say, just finish and get out of the way for me. And then you find out that there are many people who would tell you, Apostle, I'm fasting and praying. And in the midst of the fasting and prayer, I still see demons come to oppress me. You see that? And sometimes we men of God are at a loss as to why, you know, what should have caused that now. And we say, just go. You are not serious with God. That's why. It's not true. It's not true. That person is very serious with God. That's even why Satan is oppressing the person. Hallelujah. I'm saying that because it's happening to many of us and sometimes we come to church and we just say amen but we live back with our various questions and our frustrations and sooner or later the believer will become discouraged and say you know what I love the Lord I will still keep doing church but I will really go and find a solution that befits my problem It's why there is a mix of the Christian faith and many other extra biblical practices today and then we say things like the word of God works and that is so true but the average believer has not experienced perpetually the victory that is in Christ if we are to be honest and we are to admit it a few people may have received like trickles of rain a few testimonies here and there but most believers are yet to walk in the experience of this abundant life, the experience of this victory in Christ. The average believer does not have the confidence to be able to reproduce the victory in Christ here and now. It's like if it happens, let it happen. So we pray, for instance, and we say, Father, give me a job, change my life, do this and that. If it so happens, we say, wow, it happened. If it does not happen, after all, we knew it would not happen. The fundamentals of redemption it is true that you and I have authority over Satan but it's important for us to understand the jurisdiction of authority and how to exercise that authority and the Lord placed it in my heart that the end time church needs to walk in the reality of dominion I repeat over unclean spirits dominion over sicknesses and diseases hallelujah and then dominion over resources. This one has plagued many believers. Resources. The inability to be able to have command of the resources it takes to live a decent and a meaningful life and then to be part of God's end time program. The greatest attack that will come upon the saints will come in these three areas. Satan is fashioning a very dangerous weapon to bring upon the believers that it looks like the devil wants to make a caricature of Christians and to mock them that while we are serving God and rolling on the floor there are spirits that seem to move unhindered destroying families writing negative narratives over our lives hallelujah Elijah got angry because it looked like the silence had emboldened the prophets of Baal and he got angry one day and said you know what we're going to stop being in a straight betwixt if God be God serve him if Baal be God serve him let's go up the mountain let's prove once and for all that the God that answers by fire let that be the God listen I believe with all my heart that the end time church is going to rise with such power and grace you will see a widespread manifestation of dominion can i tell you there is no church as 
an institution and as a local assembly that demonstrates authority over spirits, authority over sickness, authority over resources that will be empty in this end time. Because the major problem of men is centered around these three things. People will run anywhere they know that they can find solution over curses, over spirits, over yokes. Many of you have left your homes to come now. It didn't matter to you what sermon you were going to hear. Your major concern was that I carried this spirit disturbing me. I transported it to Koinonia and let it sit down with me here in hope that someone with the power and the wisdom from God will be able to bring that separation. When someone leaves his home, ladies and gentlemen, and comes and sits down here, and after two, three hours, every curse, every yoke, every pronouncement upon that person gives way, and he returns back home, and the testimonies that follow liberty, testimonies that follow liberty, not assumed stories, not assumed testimonies. By Monday, doors are open as proof that Satan has left you. Tuesday, doors are open. Your loved ones say, what happened? They usually would not listen to you. But now this is a manifestation that is foreign to the history of this family. We've not seen breakthrough like this. A young boy that was, that was missing suddenly returns back home. Hmm. Most people do not understand the publicity power that victory over spirits and victory over sickness and victory over resources can bring to the name of the Lord. Wait until you find a family of 10 people impoverished financially and within one month, one by one, God begins to sign. You know how you sign a register. The sister comes and God opens a door. The brother comes and God opens a door. The one who is a missionary that as though he has been cursed, all kinds of doors open. Have you seen someone who was sick and became healed? Did you not cry? As bold as you are, most people have not seen genuine healing miracles in a consistent way. The way people testify in church, sometimes you are even, it's as if they are not sure themselves. It's almost as if they were saying, just go and say something. Genuine miracles that you watch somebody who came sick with the medical reports. I was very blessed hearing the testimonies. There are notable miracles that you cannot deny. They are proof of the hand of God. Are we together? Ladies and gentlemen, the dominion of the saints must be well represented in the area of dominion over sicknesses and diseases. I've had the honor and the privilege of praying for people. My phone is full of needs. Sometimes I feel guilty because I'm not able to attend to as many needs. And I say, oh God, please keep raising people. The more people are raised, the more some of us can rest. When there are few people, you, you can die prematurely because of the burden that comes. You are sleeping, that's when the time zone somewhere, someone is waking up and you see people sending scripture, apostle, I will not let you rest. I'm like the woman with the issue of blood. You must do this and I'm saying, oh God. Do you know why? Because they perceive that if one word comes from you, they will be healed. Now the question is, will it really happen? Or will you dash their hopes? Many of you have come here now believing probably you were motivated by others to say, look, come on and sit down. One prophetic word and you go back and your life will change. Now you have come and you are sitting. More than the truths I'm teaching, you are aware of the problems that brought you here. And can I tell you the truth? Any man of God who does not respect the pain and the problem of people who come to him will soon be preaching to an empty pew. People have real problems. And when they are pressed, every man's need is his point of contact. It's also his point of attention. When I'm speaking along an area of your need, you suddenly lighten up. Aha, uh -huh, my word is coming. What is he saying now? Hmm. Dominion over unclean spirits. There are many of you who are seated here now. The reason why your loved ones have refused to be saved is that they have watched your life they watch your zeal versus the performance of the word in your life and the gap is too wide to convince them. 
and so every time you tell them i'm going to church they say save johnny carry this your burden of religion out of my face let me manage the spirits that i'm dealing with now whether it's through appeasal or occultic manipulation let me just be managing it there but here comes a generation ladies and gentlemen men who will understand this thing with power that we will demonstrate such levels of power dominion over this unclean spirit that it should not take one year to get spirits out of a family it should not take one year for god's sake to rewrite the story of a person one time they showed me they showed me true story i think maybe we may even be a family here they showed me the photo of one of their fathers the legs here i mean the whole thing you could see the bone because I don't know what kind of condition that was. I just know it is of the devil. I've had the honor of seeing and being part of phenomenal miracles. And even as a man of God, you will think walking in this dimension for many years will get you used to it. Every spectacular manifestation of the hand of God leaves everybody, including the vessel, in awe. You stand and you say, God, what is this? What is this? A family called me one time, a simple prayer for them, and this satanic spirit just gave way. Oh my goodness, the doors that opened for them. Now the woman, they are in UK. She's giving birth next, next month, I think, or something, and property they've not been able to. And these are people who love God. They have served God. Let me speak over your life. In the name of Jesus, every spirit that followed you here, provided this is koinonia and we bear the name of the lord it must let you go now it must let you go now listen sit down please behind the widespread tragedy of men the widespread tragedy of families parents the widespread tragedy around your children, be it academic in nature, be it health-wise, be it career-wise, do not think any sustained problem in your family is void of the participation of spirits. The longevity factor behind any problem is because of the presence of spirits. Hallelujah. They will turn a great child with a great destiny to become like a fool in the presence of his parents and the devil will handpick from a very christian family so that he will use that as a message to make it look like serving god does not pay i hope you know that when he does these things it's not just because he's evil that he uses men as a portrait to write a letter to creation that god is not faithful so someone will say, this family that loves the Lord, missionaries, serving the purposes of God, look at the kind of useless children they build. One is a drunkard. The other one is a prostitute. The other one does not even know what he's doing. The other person is this and that. Is this how God rewards? If this is the Jesus you are bringing, I'd rather not go and hell says, come. My apologies sorry about that are we together now yes so you find out that these kinds of things is what Satan does in many families do you know that one manifestation of dominion over spirits can bring a whole region to Jesus by the time your child that everybody has concluded on that this one will never be saved because when you give him 20 naira, you know what he's going to do with it. When you give him 100 naira, the moment anything is missing in the house, you already know the thief. Not by word of knowledge, but because of the kind of spirit that is at work in that child. You are advising him, he will sit down like this. Are you going to change? Yes. The pastors will even pray. He will kneel down and say amen. And stand up from that place right to go and do exactly what you have said. Because it is not by might. It is not by power. While you were in that meeting, you were dealing with human bodies, but the spirits behind them were also watching you, knowing that you will waste your time. Time does not drive spirits. Anger does not drive spirits. Discussion does not drive spirits. 
Sentiments does not drive spirits. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. Can I tell you, God is speaking to a family. If you do not contend for power over unclean spirits, you will lose your loved ones to Satan. You will lose your loved ones to curses. Don't wait until they kill all your parents, kill all your children, kill all your loved ones. Rise up as a believer that you are and say in the name of Jesus, I have dominion, dominion over unclean spirits. Hallelujah. Dominion over unclean spirits. Listen. There are spirits that are assigned to individuals. There are spirits that are assigned to ministerial offices. They are not assigned to a person. So Apostle Joshua Selman as a ministerial office has a spirit assigned to it. What is the assignment? Destroy this man. Scatter his life. Destroy whatever he represents so that the body of Christ will be affected. That is the assignment. There is a spirit assigned to me because I'm on earth. There is a spirit assigned to your family. Are we together now? There are spirits assigned to regions. As soon as you enter that region, it's like a register in the spirit. This person has arrived. There is a scan in the spirit. What authority level do you have? Nothing. This is just a noise maker, church goer. He's welcome. Join the bandwagon of slaves. So you come into a city, I want to do business in Abuja, I want to do business in Lagos, I'm a graduate. All, all that is a spirit, it's just a talk from the realm of the spirit, you find out that you lose everything and you don't know what is happening. Listen to what I'm telling you, there are spirits that are assigned to marriages. A husband and a wife who love themselves, as soon as they say I do, the spirits are witnesses. Two weeks later, the man is tired, wants to slap the woman. And you counsel the man and he will sit down and even be counseling others and say, be good to your wife. Be fair to people. And once it's done, you will beat his own wife. It's not that the man is evil. There are spirits. And we keep saying we have authority, but we do not have understanding. When Jesus got into, I hope you know that the spirits in Gadara were the ones who created the storm. When Jesus was on his way coming, they knew that deliverance was coming and they raised a storm. You don't tell a storm, peace be still. No. As soon as Jesus arrived Gadara, nobody told the madman that he had arrived. The spirits knew. They were waiting for him there as soon as he arrived. What have you come to do now? And Jesus said, said do you know what? Let's negotiate. We are responsible for this place. The businesses that prosper in this place are in partnership with us. That is why immediately they left that man. Some people's businesses went down because the businesses were connected to that fraternity. So you step into Abuja and you do not know the age-long spirit. You've been prospering every other place, but bankrupt of spiritual intelligence. And you may sincerely say, well, I'm a child of God. I'm a believer. And you are right. But because you do not understand how to administer authority. All my business starts and your staff will start stealing. Even the most honest person in your company, honest people, they start changing in ways you do not understand. And you are sincere. Sometimes you think the solution is money. You carry one million. Okay, take man of God and drive these demons. And they don't go anywhere. Because you must understand the rules of engagement. And the person goes down. There are cities when you enter, you become poor to look like the city. No matter how blessed you are, there is a spirit that makes men to look like the, the city. There are people who go abroad for 10 years, 20 years. They excel. But it's like a trajectory. They come down when they are 80, 70 years old. They become like they are yesterday. And they will tell you stories. I was once in the White House. I was once, and you are saying, so what happened to you? Hallelujah. There are spirits that are responsible for stunting growth and advancement. So the moment out of a family of 10 people, you suddenly emerge and you are the person rising. 
you don't have to be bad. The fact that in your rising is the salvation of many, here comes the spirits assigned to you. And you just hear that the breadwinner of this family just died in an accident. One mad bike man just came. He did not just come. You are just watching physical things there. There are spirits assigned. I'm saying to someone again, in the name of my God and your God, every spirit that has been assigned to mock God over your life, may it give way right now. 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 Hallelujah. You see, there are many ways to enjoy the authority that immunes you against sickness or against unclean spirits. Number one is your personal understanding. Your personal understanding of the finished work of Christ. It has to be a personal revelation for you. Number two, the advantage of prophetic covering. Listen carefully. I'm showing you the ways that God designed for believers to be immune. Number one is a product of your personal revelation of the finished work of Christ. That means as a personal responsibility, you go to understand the implication of his death, burial, resurrection, how that he defeated Satan, sin, hell, and the grave. He resurrected triumphant, and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. What that means to you, and then the advantage of prophetic covering. You know the advantage of prophetic covering because everybody will come into this understanding gradually. So prophetic covering was put to midwife your victory while you learn and while you grow. That is why there are people, the moment they become connected to certain visions, even before they come into certain levels of understanding, they enjoy certain privileges. Are we together now? Remember when the blood was put on the lintel of the nation of Israel. It didn't matter the personal belief of the person in the room. Provided there was blood on the lintel, everybody within that room, even if you were an armed robber, you were saved from the angel of death. Hallelujah. Dominion over unclean spirits. I have seen wicked spirits in my vision. I know what they do to families. Sometimes I am pained when I watch the ignorance of believers. They just assume that just because Jesus has died, everything automatically is gone. No, let me show you a scripture. Hebrews chapter 2, please. Give us from verse 6 to verse 9. Hebrews 2. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Please let me have your attention. Or the son of man that thou visitest him. Seven. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. The word yes, Elohim. A little lower than God. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. And did set him over the works of your hands. Read verse 8 with me please. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Uh -huh. For in that he put all things in subjection under his feet. He left nothing that is not put under his feet. The tragedy is in the last line. Read on please. But now we see not yet all things under him. Just stop there. Are you seeing that now? Paul is the one who was given the privilege of what we call the Pauline epistles. He understood redemption from a standpoint of divine revelation. And Paul is saying in as much as it is true, that in Christ, victory has been accorded every believer. But he says now, experientially, we do not yet see all things under his feet. It is true that no cause should walk in your life. But now, we do not yet see the manifestation of that victory. Because mama is still crying. The young men are still in bondage. The women are still feeding the men in that family. It ought not to be so. Now your assignment as a believer is to number one, regardless your condition, to believe that the truths that have been captured as far as Christ's finished work will not change. Let God be true and all men liars. Then number two, to take the responsibility to know 
that between prophecy and manifestation there is something you need to understand and there is something you need to engage this is a missing link for many people especially among the Pentecostal charismatic circles so we just leave everything to God and say don't worry or at best we believe the only thing we should do is just to speak I believe in speaking the word but if the only thing you do in terms of destiny actualization is speaking the word you may live a painful Christian experience laced with all kinds of disappointments because speaking is not the only thing you are mandated to do there are actions of obedience based on what scripture has given us and based on the Rima word that comes by the Spirit as a unique strategy for you if the nation of Israel kept shouting before Jericho in the name of Jesus Jericho you must go down they would have died for nothing beyond speaking a strategy was given to them and they walked in obedience and that's what brought Jericho down listen to me I want to challenge you I have seen this in my visions and the Word of God confirms it there are there is an onslaught of wicked spirits being released in this end time over ministries over men of God over families Walking in spiritual ignorance will be a costly bargain in this end time. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Satan sees that that lady, that gentleman will rise to become the horn that exalts the family. All of a sudden leads to the next one. You will start seeing mysterious sicknesses. Have you seen people with all due respect who were say AA? All of a sudden they now find out that they were SS for instance. And they cannot explain where that came from or you find someone who has been healthy living a responsible life and the next thing they say you are having HIV HIV from where sorry you are having HIV that's the end of discussion or someone just begins to feel pain side of your chest anywhere and then it's it looks like child's play until they tell you sorry from what we are seeing you've been having cancer in the last three years cancer where did it come from I eat healthy I've done my best ladies and gentlemen this is more than a health issue there are spirits their assignment is to take you out of the way for the sake of those who will be blessed by your life but again I'm praying for somebody in the name of Jesus you came for koinonia tonight if there is any sickness in your body whether you have detected it or not that is growing to become any blood disease or any cancerous statement in your life as sickness you are a man and it looks like a large prostrate is growing to become cancer or cancer breast cancer lung cancer I don't care what it is called I curse it now in the name of Jesus I curse it now in the name of Jesus please sit down I told you a story here years ago this happened in Zaria true story a woman who was pregnant and in her dream she would always see like monkeys true story come you know to molest her and all of that and she just shrugged it over true story she had a stillbirth as she gave out gave birth to a hairy child looking physically like monkeys ministries like medicine you will see all kinds of things that you would not have believed except that it is right before you i have seen a woman who got pregnant her husband had died oh she got pregnant because a spirit came to molest her and physically she started getting pregnant and you see as a man of God all those problems is you they bring it to everybody just runs to you and say look just know what to do with me because this one is a spirit don't get into end time ministry if you don't have power you will make a mockery of yourself your family and the name of Jesus are we together now yeah let's talk about sicknesses and disease I have taught you koinonia that sickness is an, a gradual administration of death 
upon a person. Now, the way God designed his system, let me repeat for your understanding, is that everybody is given the privilege of one body per lifetime. Please do not forget this. We are given the privilege of one body to host your spirit per lifetime. Lifetime meaning the period from when you are born until you finally transit out of this realm. You are given the liberty to have one body per lifetime. And maintaining that body is important for your longevity. Are we together now? Yes. And one of the commonest ways that Satan takes people out of this realm before their time, knowing the laws that God created around living, is that he afflicts your body, listen please, so that your body deteriorates. Now there is a certain health requirement for your spirit to remain in your body. When your body deteriorates beyond that point, your spirit will have to leave, whether you are done with your assignment or not. So when Satan sees that this person, it looks like there's nothing we can do with that person, sickness comes into your body. And what happens is that it starts to deteriorate your body and it gets to a point where your body can no longer host your spirit. And at that point, you will have to leave. Hallelujah. This is what happened to the man Elisha. Even though he was an anointed man of God, you will think as anointed as Elisha was, a man who could heal anything, he died of sickness. It was sickness that killed him and the anointing was still in him. And that anointing was there in the bones and it raised the dead body back to life. Yet it killed the one, the one who had it could not benefit from it because there are rules of engagement. Are we together? They were bringing a dead body and the dead body fell and touched the bones of Elisha and jacked back to life. What a miracle. And yet the person, the owner of that body became sick until he died. Can I tell you this? If you entertain sickness in your body, it will bring you untimely death. Believe me, Satan is a stubborn spirit. If he administers a dimension of sickness and you give flimsy excuses around it and don't deal with it. When you are dealing with sickness, use every scriptural means to deal with it. The bam in Gilead, the power of the Holy Ghost, attack it every... That is why I will never teach you to ignore medicine. I believe in the supernatural. I will administer the supernatural till the day I see his face. But I am a responsible man of God and I will not teach people to ignore medicine. If your faith has not grown to a level where the power of God becomes active to keep you strong, do not feel guilty. Take responsibility and see a doctor. Come for koinonia and we pray for you while we all keep growing. Are we together now? That is responsible Christianity. Many Christians in a bid to practice faith without guidance and with wisdom have deteriorated their health in a way that it could be managed. Simple things that, and Satan is an opportunist. The moment he sees a loophole, are we together now? For one year, you've been having severe pain around the heart. Doesn't matter what I just know, plus Jesus minus Satan. Careless Christian experience. And many people embrace it that way until they tell you, ah, if you had come two years ago, would have been able to work on this. You've been having internal bleeding for years. You've not cared to check it. It is your responsibility to walk in partnership with the word of God, to walk in partnership with the wisdom of the spirit, to keep this body healthy enough for your spirit to remain comfortable as you serve God. Are we together now? Years ago, someone sent a text that he saw me dying. He said, my friend, please get out of my way with all that kind of revelation. Is it easy like that to die? Hallelujah. Many people say, I shall not die, but leave. They are already on their way to the grave because they do not know what it takes to make prophecy 
become manifestation. The person who is saying, I shall not die, is dishonoring every parent, dishonoring every father, dishonoring everyone. The person who is saying, I shall not die but live, is eating anything he finds in front of him, even when he needs to or not. The person who is saying, I shall not die, is not serving the purposes of God. You are on your way dying for sure. You see that now? There are many scriptures that are connected to longevity, freedom, liberty from sickness. One is, I shall not die, but live and declare. That means if your life is not advancing the kingdom, you will be a victim in this end time. It's not a threat, it's the truth. Ah, there are people that God will not allow to die. His jealousy will defend them. They are too useful for his program. Too useful for his program. Hezekiah turned his face and said, God, you want to kill me? Remember, who will fund your project? Who will bring glory to your name? How many of us can stand and look at the spirit of death to the face and look at God who is the judge of all the earth and say, Lord, remember my work in Koinonia. Remember my partnership. Remember my giving. Rem how many people pray for apostles? Remember, it's a project. Show me a man who is doggedly involved in the program of God. I show you somebody who the devil will be forced to stay far from. Claiming blessings without the conditions connected to them is what will keep making a mockery of people. Are we together? I can tell you there are people who the God will never allow the devil take their lives. Many children eat because they are alive. Many people go to school because they are alive. There are many preachers today who are comforted and have left the way of compromise, courtesy, their help and their partnership. No devil will take them out of the way. Hallelujah. I shall not die, but live and declare. Number two, it says, honor your father and your mother in the Lord. Is that in your Bible? That it may be well with you and that you may live long. There are many people who will stand and look at their parents to their face, insult them, insult every man of God, and they don't know they are programming death. They think they are expressing themselves. And before you know it, you are dividing your years times two. And the person gets up one morning and then he just says, a bike man just killed me. No, sir. All these things you call coincidences, there are no coincidences in the spirit. Is a product of intentional programmings. As for me, I've made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, when my assignment is done, I will not die the kind of death that brings reproach to the name of the Lord. With all due respect to those who have done, who have gone, I honor them. Thank God they made heaven. But me, I've chosen the template of my own life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Believe it. Don't serve God in fear and live a defeated life. Ah, this body will not carry cancer in the name of Jesus. This body will not carry, I don't know whatever name it is called, but by the power that raised Christ from the dead, if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in this body, I decree and declare, I will weary every devil and everything. This body must host my spirit for my lifetime as appointed by God. Hallelujah. Do you believe what you are hearing tonight? There are many preachers who have not taken out time to meditate on divine health, to meditate on long life. Let me give you a counsel. If you are a man of God and you've not sat down to meditate on these things, please do so. If not, your schedules will be the very reason you will go to the grave. Hallelujah. We've had roller coaster meetings from Enugu to Lagos to Abelkuta to Lagos and back here. After service, seeing people and doing a lot of things. You keep doing, you cannot fake this thing, oh. If this grace is not at work in you, one day you will just wake up and see that you are either in ICU or maybe you are just before the throne. And it's not like it's a vision, you are gone. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You make up your mind 
intentionally. You don't say I shall not die because you are afraid. No, we are already victorious. If Jesus comes today to be absent in the body, to be present with the Lord, the advocacy for long life and health is not because of the fear of death. It is because there is much to be done for the kingdom and you require your body to host your spirit. Are we together now? Say, I shall not die. Don't keep quiet. Oh, say, I shall not die. In the name of Jesus Christ. You come from a family where the devil kills people with all due respect, people died before their time. I like you this night while you are listening to me. Make, get, let a holy anger rise in your spirit that it will be from me. This untimely death, this spirit that comes upon people and just waste their life. There are those the moment they are getting to 46, 47, 48, they start becoming afraid, moody and emotional. Because when you cross 50 from those families, that is even a testimony. Hallelujah. He gave them power. Gave them power. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all. They that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. Give it to us please. And when he had called unto him the 12 disciples, he gave them power power against are you seeing the pattern now unclean spirits to cast them out then to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases he sent them with a message verse 7 as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand prove the reality of that kingdom verse 8 by healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead cast out um, cast out devils freely you have received freely give when you read from verse 9 the next thing is talking about supplies it's always been in that order you deal with spirits your body i'm coming to the issue of supplies but my assignment is to speak to the body of christ there is a a need for a heightened awareness of the principles that truly make for health and longevity. May God forbid that you wake up one morning and just find out that somebody you loved has gone. I know that most of us here, we've lost loved ones, no problem. There's nothing we can do. We thank God that they are in Christ. But since you are alive, you have a chance now to define your reality. Do you know there are people right now who based on the satanic programming they are not supposed to see December 31st they are alive oh, they are already working now but they are part of the list from now till December this one let's try accident if it does not work try a satanic migraine headache oh this one is pregnant she's getting to nine months can we use it as an opportunity this had delivery now this can be an opportunity to kill her and the spirits skim it. And that's why the Bible said, no weapon fashioned. Weapons are fashioned. They are fashioned by studying your life. This man is a man of God. Most likely he will be laying hands on a lot of people. Can we program people with communicable diseases so that as he's laying hands, something will come upon him and kill him. This man is a businessman. The easiest way to kill him is to make him lose 10 billion naira within one month. What do you think? From there, he will plunge into depression. He may run to a herbalist and on his way coming back, both him and the goat he carried will die on the way. That's the plan. Are we together? Yeah. And while all that scheming is happening and these spirits are planning, from the realm of the spirit, all they hear is a sound like thunder. Shabakatoskiata, Pradoka Paruska Badika, Shadika Paruske, Emprekete Bakatosa Prakata, Makoske Barusiata. Ah, you are there in your room, oh. You are there in your room. Listen, Jesus was not invited to hell, he entered. Oh, it's in your Bible. 
Nobody gave him any invitation. The Bible says he showed up. He just said it is finished. And the next thing they see him there, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. Listen, one of these days, you will find yourself in a meeting where you need to settle some things. You will start praying on earth till you find yourself in the realm of the spirit. And you will see books with the names of your loved ones. And you will tear them into pieces and say, this is what has kept this family bound. This is what has destroyed this family. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Listen, the Bible says to deliver those who have been appointed unto death. A man of God once shared a testimony and I shared it here. I listened to him. He said somebody was supposed to take a flight. He missed the flight and the person was angry. He now joined a train and the train crashed. The flight too crashed. You see that these kinds of people have been appointed unto death. Whether it's bike, whether whatever the devil. There are people the devil does not want them to backslide. He wants them to die. That even in their backsliding states, they are too useful to God's program. He wants to get them out of the way. Ah, minus you, Koinonia. I said minus you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I've seen the spirit of death. Oh. I'm not just talking stories. The basis of my confidence is not my visions. It's the authority of scripture. But you cannot deny what you see. I think most believers are really, really careless. They just sit down and fold their arms. You are watching the devil destroy people. You are seeing your children become something that is... And you are not fasting yet. You are not praying yet. You are busy trying to make money. And then the devil will use the same children and kill you. No way. Make up your mind that anything under... I'm going to be showing you the weapons to use before we pray. I won't leave you like this in limbo. I'm just showing you that God is mandating the church to rise to a heightened revelation about dominion over unclean spirits. These spirits that stand in the highway, I hope you know that a major part of accidents are caused by spirits. I have prayed for people who were driving. They were not careless. The steering locked. It, they would tell you they were not careless. They were not drunk. They were driving and the next thing, the steering locked. They tried to press the brake. It was not there. You will know that there are spirits. You must die. Hallelujah. With all due respect to medicine, how about doctors that have made costly mistakes on patients' bodies? Some of them were not born again and they were simply medical practitioners. Except that when a spirit arrived at theater, he also contributed in the surgery and manipulated their hands. Something that should be a basis for healing now scattered the patient's body. This is why we need people to be born again, regardless what you do. A business can, man can be on fire. It's one thing to know how to buy and sell. It's one thing to put a mall as big as this auditorium. Then one mysterious fire in the name of one wire sparking burns everything. And you, as intelligent as you are, you actually believe that that fire was a product of a spark. It's a joke. God gave us brains and intents that we use them. Spirits are real. Their effect can be felt in the earth realm. Again, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, every spirit assigned to your destiny, to your ministry, to your family, to bring shame and reproach in this end time. We raise a standard by the blood. 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 Please sit down. Hallelujah. 
I will only say it because it's something that has been discussed. I've shared it with the workers. When we started meetings here, about a month after then, the officials here were going around this facility and when they went outside, they saw something hanging in a leather and they thought, who is it that just threw this thing there? And the next thing, they picked it up and brought it and it was a charm. well-concocted charm only god knows what the charm was supposed to do destroy koinonia destroy apostle joshua selma even a madman does not enter fire by mistake as as mad as a man is if he comes near fire he has the sanity enough to know that fire destroys i don't say these kinds of things with any apology oh. let me tell you the individual and the spirit that tries this ministry dies on the spot as a testimony on the spot and you believe i'm joking try it so that your life will be a lesson for others i didn't say one week later on the spot listen i have seen spirits i've seen jesus something happens to you there are things when you have seen you know how many charms this hand has held i'm not bragging i've shared with you my story people carry charms charms that are for families charms older than even my parents and i say bring it to me i know what to do you go you are free just leave me and the devil Listen, I submit to you, and I'm sorry if I sound proud, but there are God gave gifts to men. Are we together? No matter how mad, listen, we have we've been in just where there was crisis. Crisis. If his death, I would have died. In Zaria for years, for many of you who know Zaria, there's no kind of crisis that has happened there that we're not there in a whole you understand what i'm saying there is a way god trains you you do not fear again anybody that plants anything around your life and if i be a man of god in the name of jesus christ beginning from this night both them and the charm the earth will bury them Be sensitive oh be sensitive about what god is doing i just sense that god is settling tonight is a miracle service god has just decided that it's a miracle service for as long listen for as long as you pamper the devil and you keep quiet you will watch him destroy your children destroy your reputation listen there are people today by God's mandate on their life, they should not be this way. But they kept folding their arms. You know the kind of family you are coming from. It is true that victory has been wrought in Christ. But there is a responsibility component. Don't keep watching the ladies in the family go down. All your siblings have gone down. You are still watching. The gentlemen, they travel abroad and return back. Like failures and losers. Even those who accepted the call to ministry. You look at them and it's as if they are fake. Say, Father. Father. One more time. Say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every influence, every spirit assigned to my life and to my destiny. I stand in the victory of Christ and I establish it in my life. Open your mouth in one minute and pray. Establishing victory through understanding, establishing victory by faith, establishing victory 
by spiritual intelligence. Pray. Hebra poskete pratika pariasa. Embregete katosko to brekete valiata. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Let me give you one more prayer point. Say, Father. Every member of my family who is in bondage now, I stand as a priest, I stand as an intercessor, and I declare by the blood of Jesus, they are released now. Open your mouth and start praying. Every member, pray for your children, pray for your spouse. Not under your watch. In the name of Jesus. Skata bakatush kebrata keparus kate shafres kebereketa imbreketa katos koto pre e greko shekele kepa prante kapara katos koto prekete by the blood release them release them by the blood in the name of Jesus release them by the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I give you one more? Before you sit down. Say, Father, I declare that the fullness of my days I will fulfill every assignment of hell to take my life before my time, to take the life of my loved ones before their time is hereby cancelled. Open your mouth and pray. The fullness of our days. The fullness of our days. This is the heritage of the saints in light. Please don't be silent. Decree that he might just be justified. In the air, protected. On land, protected. By sea, protected. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Have you noticed that in recent time over this city, there has been some demonic onslaught of people getting into vehicles? Huh? Have you had someone that it happened to? That someone just, and ah, I'm angry, my spirit. Hear me. I say this as one sent by God. Any kidnapper or any driver, one chance they call it or whatever it's called, in the name of Jesus Christ, that anyone who will pick any son or daughter of Zion, may my God judge them instantly. May my God judge them instantly. May the earth fight them instantly. Listen, listen, this is what happens in a territory when the saints are lazy. You will think that these boys that are picking people and collecting phones and collect, it happens in every society, you see. But have you noticed that there are seasons where it's like a pattern, it's like a satanic grace just comes on people, either stealing, either irresponsibility. The young people are not the ones, it is a spirit taking advantage of their partnership with hell. Many families cannot have peace and all of that because of some kind of satanic thing. Anybody that nears your loved ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying by the power of the Holy Spirit, may my God judge them. And if there is any loved one who has been kidnapped now, wherever they are, we set confusion in the camp of the enemy. Hallelujah. Please sit down. 
Can I tell you? You have a child that is still within the age of correction and is misbehaving, insulting people, slapping visitors. Don't sit there and say he's only a child. Call him and lay your hands on him and say, not under my watch. I curse that spirit of rebellion. That is only a sample of what he will do to you if you keep quiet and keep watching him. In the name of Jesus, that you are praying in the spirit, authority over unclean spirits, authority over sicknesses and diseases. I'm saying this thing because it is one of the things I'm praying that we do not start hearing news of people, people you love and admire, and they say this person just went down. Mysterious sickness that has no name, he survived by. This great person just went down. When God brings a prophetic word, it's not to bring fear. It is to build you up so that you can stand strong. Are we together? The last area is dominion over resources. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Please allow me cast something out of your life and destiny this night. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always, say always. always. One more time, say always. always. Having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. Please look at me, believers. One of the major ways that Satan attacks the saints is in the area of access to supplies, access to resources. The most distracting aspect of the believer's life proven by history is the area of finances and the frustration that comes because of their inability to get needs done. Do you know I submit to you, and, I'm, and many people here are servants of the living God, men and women of God. There are men of God today who cannot even have the breathing space to prepare sermons and bless God's people. Because you get to the table, your Bible is on that same table, and there are bills. And you have to think, how do I raise this money? And the devil will suggest, gather the people and manipulate them. Tell them lies. Do something so that you can meet these bills. How do you pay for the bills? You see that? One of the number one sponsor of compromise among believers is the absence of sufficiency. I hate to just use the word finance because most people would think we are just talking about money. To be incapacitated, economically speaking, is a dangerous thing. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. With all humility and by the grace of God, I can tell you that the reason why you are comfortably seated receiving the word of God and you can guarantee that nobody will manipulate you and try to take advantage of you is not just because of the anointing. It's that by the grace and the help of God, there is sufficiency to be able to get the work of God done so that integrity can be maintained. Integrity is a function of many factors. The will to live a life of integrity is only one. The means to support your desire to walk in integrity must also be there. There are many people today who pray in tongues in church, but when bribe comes, they will collect. It's not because they are bad. They have children in school. Are we together now? Yes. It's only God that knows what people do for finances and come to church and wear the sanctimonious garment and say, Lord, we thank you. Lack and insufficiency is a curse. Let me repeat it so that you hear. Lack and insufficiency is a curse. I'm saying it as a man of God. Lack and insufficiency is a curse. A curse that affects your mind, not your account. Hallelujah. I know what it means to be in a position where you are incapacitated financially and you are under pressure. The, one of the major causes, statistics will tell us, of the high blood pressure of many men right now is economic issues. They sit down and they watch their children. They just lost their job, downsized them. Madam is not doing anything. And here are four or five or six children. And you know how it is in Africa, plus relatives who have now come, who are staying with you. And all that is on you. And you find people talking to themselves, driving and talking to themselves till they hit a tree without knowing. 
That's what depression and frustration is doing, including preachers. Some of this anger you see with preachers on stage is financial that, that causes it. People just come on stage and lash out on, on everybody and you are wondering, what did I do? I only came to church to hear the gospel because there are bills. For as long as I live, nobody will manipulate you in this ministry on economic ground, no. When it's time to give, we'll challenge you to give and present it to you in truth. But we fear God too much. But you see, you cannot make a statement like this with an empty account. It's a lie. Just believe me. Whether you believe it or not is the truth. Most people have no idea, and I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility, what it takes to run one koinonia service. You've heard me say it. It's what many people use for conferences. One koinonia service. Hallelujah. You have to be empowered in this end time. If not one day, you will not know when you will carry your own children by yourself and say, please, sell this child and bring the money. And don't you say, God forbid, ask the two women in the Bible. Is it in your Bible that women, do you know what it means for a mother to watch her child and boil the child, the Bible says, and eats the child? What kind of hunger is that? No goats, no cows, no nothing. And you see four people crying, two women and their children, and the mother is looking at the child. The child thinks it's compassion, and the mother is preparing to eat the child. That is to tell you what happens. Look, let me tell you, compromise makes a lot of sense in the presence of desperation. Did you hear what I said? Compromise makes a lot of sense in the presence of desperation. By the time they are throwing your child out, and this child is in his final year and just because of 200,000, 300,000, this child is about to lose his opportunity. You will not know when as a parent, you can simply doctor some, uh, uh, what they call it now, some reports. Your office gives you that privilege and yet your conscience is standing before God. Do I do this? Do I not? One of the ways that God helps men to walk in integrity and righteousness is to grant them access to sufficiency by the Spirit. I have met many sincere people who have been active participants in the world of compromise and they will tell you, Apostle, I'm not a bad person. It is the kind of pressure that is on me. Pressure that is on me. Are we together? Yeah. And if the saints deny this, you have only given Satan a tool to destroy you every time God's people serve his purposes and they begin to muse the idea of an exodus Satan comes to attack them economically look at what happened to Israel in Egypt hallelujah they were there they were given straw but the moment Moses came and started speaking Pharaoh said ah it's because you have straw given to you that's why you even have the time to be thinking of an exodus stop giving them straw the time they are using to pray let them use it do you know there are many families today that cannot call for a retreat as individuals as a couple as a family they don't have that luxury of time because Satan has burdened many family with the yoke of looking for money there are parents with all due respect that never see themselves for days because by the time the other person is sleeping, the other person is already outgoing. They return back in the night. How about young children? I said it, I think a few weeks that I'm teaching. Uh, I was teaching here. A young girl of 18 years old returns back home with 1 million and the parents suspect that this lady must have done something that is not correct, but they cannot rebuke her because they need it. So the lady says, thank God my parents are even backing me. When Koinonia started around this area, this region, I'm still learning the names of some of these regions, but by the time you drive, the first, I remember after the first Koinonia service, I was driving home and I said, what is this? Late in the night in the, in the heat of revival that was about to start, something was going on around this region. Are we together? And 
Don't you think some of those people are demonic people? You have no idea. Some of the parents of those children have been determined to be irresponsible. And those children will tell you, I'm doing this to sponsor my brother. I'm doing this to sponsor my sister. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God must help us to get to a point where we understand how to translate the riches of Christ in glory and to make it manifest in our lives. Otherwise, a generation will come that will not call the name of the Lord again because of lack. And this is something Satan has used to cheat the church. On one hand, we have people who have... Uh, advocates of materialism and lust for money the entire discussion is money 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 whether people are born again or not whether they are saved or not whether they love jesus or not whether they are passionate money is what rules everything that is another side of the danger but then there are people who in error and ignorance and even in pride have interrupted god's program in terms of making supplies available it is a big mistake if the church of the lord jesus christ decides to frown at economic empowerment especially through the dignity of kingdom integrity there is a, a relationship between influence and financial supplies you will be a better christian if you can give your children a healthy meal you will be a better christian if you can send them to good schools whose values you are aware of but if you do not have the resources you have to make do with what is there until your child asks you a question as a parent that you will not be able to sleep where did you learn this from and they'll say that's what my teacher taught me but you have no you, you want the child to change two years in that kind of institution and your child has become something else and becomes the reason for your pain until you drop dead how about the financing of the gospel? There are many people today, pastors, missionaries, families who love the Lord with all their heart, but they have been limited financially. Right now, because of what is happening economically, globally, housing rates have increased, you know, money for gas, and there are people who just smile in church and dance. But the truth is that there are people who, some of you are listening to me right now, the one problem is this issue of finance and it has led people to depression no wonder our young people today are getting into money ritual the solution is not just to say stop young people have energy they need to make progress in their lives like I said the last time I will never endorse this evil but just saying stop is, is not the solution they must be shown the kingdom's way by the time a young man is seeing his sick mother the sick father and somebody tells him just go and slaughter one young girl or slaughter one young boy carry their organs to some herbalist and suddenly become a millionaire overnight they will do it and carry the tithe and bring it to church and because we men of God are also incapacitated financially even if God reveals to you that this is blood money you will say I will give thanks and still collect Hallelujah. How many ministers of the gospel finish preaching to God's people and they go back depressed and in pain, wondering, their wives and children asking them, is this, is this what God called you to do? Is this how our lives will be? Simply because you answered the call. You were a doctor, you were an engineer, you were an architect, you were a great man. Is the call to ministry a call to becoming a cause? That's why I made up my mind and I've told you that my first part of call is to make sure you are vibrant spiritually, loving the Lord, growing in character, confirming to the image of Christ. Second is to grant you spiritual intelligence, to understand the kingdom and understand the life of the spirit. Number three is to empower you by the spirit so that you become mighty and robust to do the works of the kingdom. Number four is to reveal purpose for you. That every empowerment and enlightenment that comes to the believer is connected to kingdom come. But finally to see to it that you live a life of decency with dignity. Serving the Lord and living as responsible people while you do so. That is my assignment. And as the Lord keeps me alive, I will not fail in any one of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
I will never raise a people who will keep stealing from one another in the name of Jesus because of economic problems. People who sit in church and the man is wondering, there are some of you now who have traveled from the end of this city to come and you live there. Not because you cannot get a place closer. You are trusting God and saying, look, if God can help me to get a vehicle for my wife and my children so that it will help me do, do you think that God is so wicked that he will not want to help you on that wise? No. Listen, balanced Christianity must have a decent life represented in the proposition. A life of decency and a life of dignity. I serve Jesus because I love him. I have never served him because of money or fame and I will never. But like I have told you, he has encouraged me today by making sure that there is bread on my table. I can shout like this and see people and stretch myself because if I go home, there is bread, there is tea on my table. And it will be evil of a man of God for me to have bread and tea on my table and not care whether you have it too on your table. Every time people carry seeds to give me, I receive it with gratitude, but sometimes I feel guilty because my assignment is, have I empowered this person enough by the word of God to collect their seeds? I know that you have to collect for people to rise, but I tell you sincerely, sometimes I feel guilty because you see somebody who does not even have anything, but they come with the sincerity of their faith, with the little that they know. Some of them even empty their accounts and say, man of God, I was taught that sacrifice opens the door. How do you become such a heartless person that you just say, hey, bring it or yeah, go, may God help you. Doesn't matter whether the person dies, doesn't matter whether, no, no, no. That is why every service I keep releasing the various graces and supplying the wisdom when I teach on a financial series, I teach it without apology. I teach it to all those who need to know and learn. When I teach on character, when I teach on the spirit life, every aspect of the kingdom that will help the believer to be of stature and to be holistic. Today, by the privilege of God's grace, we can serve God acceptably and we can also extend the hand of blessing to as many. And I am happy and proud for being able to do this for Jesus. Hallelujah. We announced the program that we're doing, I think, first or second week of November. It was a burden that God put in my heart. And we decided to bring in some doctors from John Hopkins Hospital and then a few, you know, here around within the country. And we're doing a two-day program. Number one is for awaiting couples, those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, to bring all these professionals to come and help examine and see what they can do to bring joy to these families and then number two to gather medical practitioners together and then help them to understand best practices some of them may not have the privilege of going to john hopkins hospital but we can bring the people there and see to it that they are going to bring and the lord put it in my heart i'm not saying this to brag hallelujah Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, don't talk about people till you can do two times what they've done once. Hallelujah. By the privilege of God's grace, we are not here to blow trumpets, but to say God has not helped us to do things for his kingdom. Hallelujah. The boreholes, the prisons, the things that have been done, out of these people, we're selecting 20 families that are trusting God and paying full their program for IVF for 20 families to have the opportunity to do that. I made a statement, I think it was in Enugu when I was ministering. If you cannot give, respect those who give. If you are broke, respect those who have helped, God has helped, who have resources and still fear God. Hallelujah. When I was teaching you on relationships here, I said, if you are poor, have character. If you don't have both, you will remain poor forever. If you, don't have, if you are poor, be friendly and respect people. Don't join the bandwagon of ignorant people who have nothing, not making any contribution for the kingdom. Their ten naira will not go out without them having peace. Hallelujah. The, 
the number of children in koinonia here that by god's grace we have given scholarships and are helping families it's not it's not to brag but i need to tell you these things happen it takes more than compassion it takes resources our precious school of ministry students i think during my birthday they were i was so touched when they went to kujay prison the marvelous things that they did for the people there and all the humanitarian activities the name of jesus is very heavy it takes resources to lift it up to the nations i've had the honor of watching crying families have their tears wiped in one moment because you were able to help with housing or bread hallelujah there was a situation here not too long ago after service i was attending to people and someone from the medical department came and they brought this wonderful woman who was holding a child this child was almost dying and if i believe that that child would have been managed eventually i got to find out that the child eventually passed on because of the pure living condition that is almost is worse than that which you will give an animal ladies and gentlemen when jesus walked upon the earth he demonstrated that among the many indices that show true godliness is the ability to be empowered and then to stretch your hands and extend the same perhaps not everybody will be able to or be interested in laying hands on the sick to see them healed perhaps not everybody will be interested in standing apostolically and prophetically to declare liberty over climates and over nations but everybody has a role to play in providing financial resources for kingdom advance do you know the manipulation that happens in church oh please do this do that it is not believers are supposed to be mentored to understand that part of your kingdom responsibility is helping to make financial resources available for kingdom advance in many non-christian practices they teach the people it is part of their kingdom responsibility so when god blesses people they know that among the many things to do with that blessing is to see to it that the program of God finds expression. Hallelujah. Let me give you two keys and then we'll pray. The two keys from scripture that will help you to establish these three levels of dominion in your life and then other people's lives that are connected to you. Let me give you the keys. There are many, but I will just give you two for tonight. Are you ready? Number one is to learn how to receive the wisdom of the Spirit in the place of prayer. Please write it down. The first way, the first way to convert the things that God has said to be made manifest in your life is to use the weapon of prayer to tap into the wisdom of the Spirit and know what you need to do to make that blessing manifest now the bible speaks generally about how to get answers for everything but there are unique instances in our lives whose solutions are not directly written in scripture this is where the wisdom of the spirit comes are we together there is nowhere in scripture where it is written how you should take care of four of your children or how you should heal cancer or how you should attend to your needs the place of prayer listen we pray for many reasons but i am telling you that one of the scriptural strategies end time strategies for believers is to know how to use prayer not just for intercession not just for transformation but prayer as a tool for ascendance that you can use prayer to ascend until you draw the wisdom of the spirit and download it a rhema word from God that you will obey immediately and it will make the word of God to be made manifest many believers study scripture but you do not know that most of the things that you read in scripture were inspired by the Holy Ghost and that same spirit lives in you but you must know how to stir up the operation of the Holy Spirit to reveal to you for instance when we're about to start here in Abuja I've shared it with you and I keep sharing I was praying we did not even know where we'll be using for an auditorium for instance now that is not written in scripture 
there is a general guide as to what to do but now the unique word that provides solution and brings to pass what God has said and I kept praying in the spirit Lord what is the way out I am frail in myself and in my ability you are the only one who will help me and while I kept praying one day a Rema word came and the Lord told me buy the map get a the map of Abuja the map of Nigeria the map of Africa and the map of the globe and keep praying on it now it does not make sense but that is a Rema word the prophetic word of God is now being converted to the experience and I went got it in obedience and all I kept doing was to pray in fact as at the time I was praying I had not yet even settled if it was Abuja I was still trying to confirm in my spirit it was one time I was praying and my eyes were lifted and I saw just when you are coming towards I think the stadium road also that map of Abuja that was when I saw it and immediately I knew that this was it but now that is step one how are you now going to begin to make things happen and then to pray in the name of Jesus how is this going to happen Lord reveal to me can I tell you this when you stay in the place of prayer and you stretch in patience waiting for the Lord his word will come when the word of the Lord comes, it comes with a solution for you. For someone, that word can come and God will tell you, call so, 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 I'm so person and just tell him about your needs. Ordinary, that is a failed strategy. But God will tell you and you will speak to the person and the person will say, you know, I was just thinking of someone to bless. How much is it? And you say, sir, I'm even afraid of saying it. He says, say it. It's 10 million. He says, come and collect it tomorrow. And you will kneel down there and say, God, what is this? It is a rema word. Most believers do not know how to stay until they get the strategy that brings prophetic words to come to pass. There are people who, in the place of prayer, God will tell you, go and get a bottle of water as a rema word and take it while you are praying. That will be the cure of that sickness. It may not make sense, but it's a rema word for you. It's not a ritual to now start sharing for everybody. It's not a doctrine, but it has come as a rema word. You will carry that water and just take, and that is the end of it. That destructive sickness will never plague you again. There are others, God will say, wake up by 12 in the night. Just walk around your living room. Sing praises. Just sing praises. And you will get up by 12 you are still feeling the pain but because he said so you will be singing praises like a madman sometimes as a businessman all doors have closed you have done everything you need to know and to do and you will just be singing praises to the lord and while you are singing praises the pain goes never to return or while you are singing the praises an email will come and a lot will come you see that now it was in the place of prayer that God brought the word for the sound of revival that we did in UK. It was in the place of prayer. I knew that it was time we're stepping into a season where we are now taking the kingdom and the power of God across the globe. But to guess how you would do it, you can fail as if God did not speak to you. There are many people, what you are doing is a wrong strategy, but the goal is genuine. God actually told you that this is what you would do, but you did not stay to get the strategy. You just assumed that just because God said feed the hungry and you carry money and before you know it, you are broke. Or God said you are a man of God, you just assume that it's to start a church and you don't have the bills nor the people to come and listen to you. The first key that converts the prophetic speakings of God, you want dominion over spirits, dominion over sicknesses and diseases dominion over limitations economically speaking you must learn to invest in the place of prayer for the purpose of tapping into the wisdom of the spirit that is how i prepare some of the sermons that come of course there is a principle for preparing sermons but i take out time and pray and god is at liberty to interrupt my schedule and interrupt any series we may be ongoing with to be able to reveal after all we are all his people and he is the lord over the ministry we are organized people but not at the expense of the prophetic speakings of god he has liberty to interrupt at any time and bring forth that which is needed in the season 
Hallelujah. Yes. So they come to Jesus and say, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act of it. The issue was not the woman. The issue was to find a way of discrediting him. And he keeps quiet and is writing. And he looks at them. Wisdom. He who does not have sin among you, cast the first stone. And that was the end of it. How about his healing? There were some that he spat on the ground and made spittle out of it. Put it on their eyes and said, go and wash in the pool called Siloam. There were others he spoke to them, laid hands. There were others he made a decree. He even though he knew that he was, God was with him and it was in his destiny to heal the sick. He had to wait for every rhema word. Do you see, this is the difference between our generation and the generation of our fathers. Most of them were not very educated, but they will wait till God speaks. They will never take careless steps. Our generation is quite intellectual and in it, sometimes we just ignore the place of the voice of God. Should I pursue, oh God? I know it is in my destiny to get to the promised land, but how am I going to defeat them? And you sit down and begin to pray. You are singing songs of worship and sometimes in the midst of that prayer, you will fall asleep. It's not slumber. Is God putting you to sleep and you will have a prophetic dream and out of that dream will come the solution for the next level hallelujah you believe what I'm sharing with you so every believer who wants to be part of this dominion campaign over spirits over infirmities and over financial bankruptcy must know how to pray to tap into the wisdom of the spirit sometimes you are studying and you are praying and the holy spirit will lead you to a property that does not make sense and say just buy that land and leave it there you buy that land two weeks later someone else will come and they will want to buy it, even if it's ten times more they will say we need it wisdom hallelujah some of you sometimes the spirit of god will just speak to you and say you know what send a text to this person and just greet the person don't talk about money don't talk about a need and the holy spirit will say you just obey because it came in the place of prayer you see you just send a text and the person looks at you and says how are you i hope you are doing well and you say well not exactly well what is the issue i've been struggling for my rent and it's okay you know what for the next four years i will be paying your rent send me your account number and that's it simple instruction it came by the wisdom of god someone will look at your life and see that you may not have a job as it were but you are excelling in a way that they cannot understand is because you have learned how to pray listen we are a very busy people especially within the context of today's world but let me plead and beckon on you those who will be champions in the spirit in this end time are people who can stay away and take some time when you pray and get direction then you can take action taking action in ignorance or disobedience will only recycle pain there are men of god you have to stop don't just assume that because everybody is doing conferences i must do it too everybody is doing this there are people today who went to do charity and they became poor because they did not ask from god to get direction they carried all their money home and abroad and went to do charity and went down not to rise up again. When God speaks, there is honor that follows his word. When God speaks, there is power that backs what he says. Can I tell you, except it is not the God of heaven speaking, when he speaks, you can trust what he says. Let me give you number two. Is someone learning? We must become people of prayer. There are many believers who pray but they do not pray with the consciousness of tapping into the wisdom of the spirit. You can pray for transformation. You can pray for warfare. But there are times you can pray and imagine a man climbing a ladder while you are praying. You are ascending to the spirit, bringing your ears closer to the heart of God by the spirit. Then his word comes. No, do not do it this way. Do it this way. Do not do it this way. Do it this way. Oh, you are taking this step. Hold on. Do it this way. 
and you obey God with childlike faith and you return back with extraordinary results. The people that you see that look invincible, they are not necessarily extraordinary in themselves. They have just learned how to wait until he speaks. Hallelujah. The second key I will give you now and then we'll wrap up. You want to step into this dominion. It's going to happen when you honor the people who God has placed this grace upon and that you can receive genuinely through hunger, through service and through honor. Please listen to this as we wrap up. There are dimensions in the spirit in as much as Christ died to make it available. The administration of those graces depend on transference of mantles and graces from the carriers of this grace to those who need them. Please believe me. There are people today who embody the grace for wealth and abundance not by making empty noise. It is a grace God gave them. There are people today who God has placed his hand upon them unusual understanding into the realm of the spirit and how to administer victory over unclean spirits. You will never tap into that grace dishonoring these vessels. It is the reason why we advocate honor. You see the reason why many people remain incapacitated because generally it's almost become a fashion to criticize areas that you do not see working in your life. I don't know where we got that satanic campaign, but I pray that that thing leaves the body of Christ. That when people find out that there is an area they are not stepping into, they downplay it, they demean it. So you see someone talking and x-raying the issue of unclean spirits and talking with authority and that person cannot cast out a single spirit and liberate families. Empty talk without the grace for performance. How about those who criticize? There are people who have the F1 tree to criticize men like Benny Hinn and shout over people and then you find out that they do not have the grace to heal even a common headache. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, let me teach you this. You will never step into a dimension of grace you dishonor. It's a principle that you must learn. The moment you make it as part of your life to dishonor the body, dishonor fathers, dishonor carriers of this grace. I'm not teaching human worship. And sometimes I know that we men of God have found ourselves victims of subjugating people because of the little grace that God has given. That in itself is wrong. However, anointing answers to honor. Anointing answers to genuine honor. You can honor your way into realms where you access graces that can put you in charge indeed. And part of what you're about to receive shortly is prayer to impart that grace upon your life. I remember many years ago, I used to see people pray and cast out devils and it was, it was like I was watching a movie. What in the world is this? What sort of authority is this? How do you command spirits to exit the lives and the destinies of people? In my ignorance and limited knowledge, I made up my mind from my spirit and seen from scripture that I would step into this grace. There has to be that understanding that releases that authority. How about sicknesses and diseases? I would watch Benny Hinn, T.L. Osborne, Charles and Francis Hunter, these mighty men, and you see their meetings, you think they are joking until they make declarations and you see all manner of healings. Rain had bunker and I said, come on God, You're, the same Lord is rich unto all. There has to be something. This healing anointing is real. Where is it? Lord, bring it within my reach. I remember buying the videos of Charles and Francis Hunter, buying their books, T.L. Osborne's books, Benny Hinn, because I could not access them directly, but I said I will honor their materials and I will keep it side by side with scripture. And then when it had to do with the grace for favor, I initially kept looking at the grace for prosperity, but I found that prosperity was a subset of favor. You can have money without favor, but it's impossible to have the favor of God upon your life and be bankrupt economically. 
and I searched for people when I found people like Dr. Mike Modok I camped around their teachings and said Lord whatever grace you placed upon this man there has to be a way out these are people who God has helped Kenneth Copeland God helped them I said no we have to camp around these things When this grace comes on you, you know it has arrived. You truly know it has arrived. Graces are transferable. That's why nobody needs to remain in that low level. We may not all be at the same level per time, but everybody can enter a level that makes your Christian experience a delight to behold. Hallelujah. And in the next few minutes, I want to pray over your life. Many of you will be surprised that by reason of this impartation, you will go back home and they will tell you that someone has been manifesting under the influence of spirits. You will stand and you will think it's a joke. You will say in the name of Jesus and watch those devils leave in a moment never to return. And then you will see doors open over your family members. They will call you pastor and you say, I'm not a pastor. They say, that's, that's none of our business. Whoever can cast out a devil like this is our pastor. How about sickness? There are some of you who will carry these hands that you see God has given you. It's not just for eating. You will carry these hands and lay it upon people and watch with wonder, growths, satanic manifestations in their bodies will just dry up like that. And they will ask you what happened. And you will tell them it's true that God gives gifts to men. God can give gifts to men. God can empower men. And then some of you, when the grace for favor rests upon your life, I heard one of our dear sisters who was testifying here, you will marvel and wonder. It does not take long for this to happen. You will see God moving in your life in a way that will surprise you. Ideas you did not think of, downloaded in your spirit, strategies by the spirit on what to do and what not to do. All it be it by the spirit. I want you to rise in one minute. And you are going to pray one prayer and then I pray for you father in the name of Jesus I open up my heart and I open up my spirit to receive the impartation that positions me to manifest this kingdom authority even within this end time I want to be an effective battle axe I want to be an effective believer not just one who comes to receive in church but one who one who becomes an extension of that power go ahead and pray once upon a time the disciples could not cast out spirits once upon a time the disciples could not pray for the sick once upon a time they could not enjoy and experience the blessings of the Lord but something came upon them go ahead and pray take a minute to pray ladies and gentlemen a global family connecting from across the globe this is what God wants to do in this season dominion over unclean spirits bringing liberty to men, ministering the spirit, releasing families, releasing captives, dominion over sicknesses, diseases, infirmity, death, dominion over economic financial limitations that have plagued the body of Christ. Someone pray. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Pray.
Hallelujah. Please look up. Is it possible to truly walk in the experience of authority over unclean spirits? Yes. Do you have to be a man of God to access that privilege? In terms of ministry? No. In terms of knowing God? Yes. Can you have authority over sickness, disease, untimely death? Yes, sir. Is there a grace that can enhance that reality? Yes, sir. Can you walk in favor that elemental forces within your territory are compelled to bow and deliver its riches to you? Yes, sir. Is there a grace that controls that possibility? Yes, sir. Can men receive it? Yes. Can it be made manifest here and now? Yes, sir. I'm saying that because this is what you are about to receive. So open up your spirit as I pray for you. And then we wrap up the service. Father, you have placed this prophetic word in my heart for the body of Christ. That there is a need to come into a higher spiritual understanding and then to access the requisite grace. I'm praying right now for a man of God here. I'm praying right now for a businessman here. I'm praying for a prophet, an apostle, an evangelist, a pastor following from some nation where your life has been barren of the experience of what the word says should be as a result of the finished work of Christ. I decree and declare authority over unclean spirits receive that grace right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now that from tonight in the name of Jesus you will not have to bring them to Joshua Selman that you will stand as a priest that you are and make declarations and this grace will speak for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, in the name of Jesus, I first pray for you. The sickness that will kill you, may it never come near your body. The sickness that will deteriorate your organs, may it never come near your destiny. And if there is anyone under the sound of my voice, who is having any planting in their body that is not by my God, I command it to jump out of your life. With these anointed hands, may you go back and lay them on the sick and watch mighty miracles happen by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, and finally for tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, the grace that quickens your mind, then quickens your hand, then draws men to you to make for supplies in your life. In the name of Jesus, I place that grace on your head. I place that grace on your head. I speak to every financial bill that may be depressing you, that is not giving you peace, you are not able to sleep because there are needs that must be met. This week, I stand by the prophetic and the apostolic. May my God raise strange help for you. May my God raise strange help for you. In the name of Jesus, hear me. Anyone here who may have lost in business, you've lost money, you've lost clients, you've lost opportunity, in the name of Jesus, I place a grace on you. Go back and excel. For the sake of his name and for the sake of his kingdom, go back and excel. And there are many of you here, while you sleep in the night, the spirit of wisdom will come to you and open you up to strange strategies that makes for your rising in the name of Jesus Christ. Koinonia, hear me. 
nobody under the sound of my voice will die before their time nobody under the sound of my voice will have to live their life begging for tea and prayer every family here that is going through any kind of limitation in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I am praying let my God arise and help you and finally any human agent who has been ordained by God to help you and support you as you rise they may have forgotten you they may have been ill advised against you but I'm praying this week may my God use them to bring his word to pass in your life in the name of Jesus Christ therefore my dear people walk in this consciousness don't just share the grace and leave walk in this consciousness that I am anointed walk in this consciousness that I am God's battle axe walk in this consciousness that many destinies depend on me walk in this consciousness that I have received something that I must put to work and as you do that you will see the God of wonder surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ keep standing everyone let me make the altar call I always make the altar call every week why because I love Jesus number two because I love the people who he's bringing forth to make their ways right with him number three because it is the first of the Great Commission we have been mandated to see to it that the lost come to the fold you are in this place tonight you came to church and whilst you heard me speak the Spirit of God began to speak to you that it is time to make your ways right with God perhaps you are making this decision for the first time it does not matter or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus you are saying apostle I do not want to leave this place without making my ways right with Jesus there's no point cajoling you know by the Spirit that he's been speaking to you I'm going to count one to five whether you are up the balcony scattered across the congregation all the overflows or perhaps someone who is following online or by way of television wherever you are as I count one to five very boldly without shame without intimidation this is a family that loves you leave your seat and I want you to come and stand here as I count five thank God for my beautiful sister one leave your seat and come quickly let's celebrate them as they come koinonia is this the best you can do Jesus is calling many to himself Two. leave your friends leave whoever you came to church with this is a personal affair between you and your dear Savior come come three if you're coming please run to Jesus apostle you don't know how I've lived my life will Jesus accept me with all joy and pleasure come I want to start afresh again apostle can I join them yes please join them I'm not even sure if I'm saved I just know that I love Jesus and I go to church join them you can have something called the assurance of salvation God bless you come 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 hallelujah believers learn that it is a glorious thing every time people come to Jesus no man has the power to make another man leave his seat and come and stand here human beings are not dummies all these people standing are adults some of them are crying it takes the spirit of the living God through the frailty of our words he penetrates the hearts of the people and prepares them to receive salvation my brothers and my sisters, thank you for not denying Jesus. Thank you for the boldness to make that decision. It doesn't matter what you have done or not done. It doesn't matter how your life has been before now. He can give you a new beginning. May I please request that you lift your right hand. And that includes those in all the overflows. Includes those who are making this decision online. Please join as I lead God's people in this prayer. Say after me as loud as you can. Dear Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again 
for my justification right now I receive you into my heart as my Lord my Savior and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these beloved people they have come declaring your hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 